Hello, welcome. It's Hard Lore time. How are you, Bo? I'm feeling great. Feeling so good. Uh, we're in my hometown of Los Angeles, California. What are we doing today? I don't know yet. Well, there's no plans. Um, we figured we're very thirsty boys. Um, we like juice, so we figured we'd come here and get a juice. I heard this place was pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can run into somebody that can show us something to do around mm -hmm. here. But until then, <laughs> it's Anthony from um, Anthony. Hey. Bud. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh my what God! Are you're you doing? Bo, he's mic'd up. You're this mic'd up and ready to go. We, this keeps happening. This is Rick Owens. Uh, this is this is Anthony Anzaldo from from Ceremony, Cold Cave, and Anthony. How are All you? Facts. Wow. <laughs> All facts. Wow. All facts. This is this is amazing. What, what do you say we get some juice and then just go around uh, LA today? I would love nothing more. Yeah, are you busy? Uh, I would love nothing more. I'm very busy. Perfect. But I will drop. I'll drop it all. Cancel on everyone. Perfect. I'm yours. Awesome. Let's get some juice. Okay. Now, now there's an ordering. There's a situation. So you, so you can get like a juice. And this is Beverly Hills Juice Club. It's called. Yes. Okay. You can get a juice. The end. If you want. If you. If you want. I'm liking or, that. I'm liking that. Or, you get, whatever juice, is talking to you. Oh. Oh. And you get it with the banana mana, mm. and that makes it. Are you not a banana? I'm not, I can't do. I'm a huge I, banana. Guy. Okay, <laughs> then. <laughs> are we are we beefing bananas? Uh, it's just like I like it. To, I like it to eat a banana. Uh huh. I like it but, to eat of the banana. Uh huh. <laughs> but when it comes down to like banana flavoring, uh huh, it's not. Really? It's not for you. I could. I could Linda Blair uh, okay. straight on. Got it. And Got you it. know all about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something you know about. I do. Um, okay. Today. Or you do a compare and contrast. You get the juice and spend an, another, and you spend twenty five dollars mm. just just for the bit, mm. an extra. I'll do that for you, and I'll just get me a, a mixed green probably. Let's uh, let's order some juice, and then we'll talk about why we're here ordering some juice. Mm. Yeah. I would love the apple blackberry coconut. With the almond banana mana, two, please. Two of those. And I think yep. my friend here would, would like the same. Sounds awesome. Pardon me. Um, now let me ask you yes. some advice here. First time. If I was doing a, an, an apple ginger, thank you, an apple ginger of sorts, is there one that you like the best? Like what apple lemon double ginger sounds I was extreme. I say that. That's my favorite. Let's oh. go. Let's get nuts. <laughs> with in the smoothie. Or no, just, just to a bonnet on. I'm not there yet. He's afraid of the banana. No worries. It scares no worries. me. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> the reason we wanted to um, fill our gullets full of sugar today was mm -hmm. Bo here is getting a, a, a fresh tattoo by your wife. This is this is this is a fact. Heather, More facts. Heather Bailey and Zalda. Yes. Holy Union tattoo. Yep. Um, you know, a talented young woman. Good? Yeah, there's a hint of banana. It's really not that much. Bowie likey? Bowie likey. It's delicious. Uh -huh. well, I, I think it's the goat drink of Los Angeles. Really? Ooh. Wow. That's very good. Yeah. <laughs> now this is this might be the goat drink of Los Angeles, to be honest. <laughs> it's just where it's where you go for juice. It's a spicy, spicy beverage. Yeah? Okay. You got ginger in there? Okay. Well, yeah, I guess we should talk about let's talk about Anthony a little bit. Yeah. Anthony. You're you're a Bay Area man. You're yes. a Bay Area man. This is yeah. But this is your this is your zone now. This is home. When when did you move here? October of 2017. The day. Oh really? Of Halloween. Uh, Oct yep. October 27th, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um, I live uh, adjacent to Dodger Stadium. Mm -hmm. And we moved on the first day of the World Series. Oh my God. Which awesome. they were uh, perform playing in, perform performing in. <laughs> yeah, which they were, the baseball they were performing in the World Series. Okay. I didn't know I lived that close until that day. Perfect. Oh, so that I, I thought I was moving into a quiet Quaint, neighborhood yeah. and it was yeah, it's it's not just, quiet on that it's, evening, it's, my it's friend. It's not the place you're in now, is it? Um, it's on that street, yes. Yeah. We moved to Los Angeles. Right. We moved into one house. One year later, we moved two houses down. Oh, nice. um, but yes, I, I, I've been here since 2017. 
do you do you think you'll be here for the rest of your life? I sure hope you're, so. You're an LA boy. I'm an LA boy. Um, I I love it here. It, it felt like home immediately. Also, being from the Bay, yeah, like down here all the time yeah. for shows. It's not that far. I mean, yeah. it's we like to talk about how far it is, but in the grand, it just adds up when you're. We driving. can get dinner there tonight if we wanted to. Yeah, right. I will. I won't. <laughs> we could. I will not. Um, well, we could. So you, as a Bay boy, mm -hmm. as a young, small lad, yeah. When did you discover punk music? Freshman year. Well, I discovered punk music. Yeah. I guess punk and hard punk. Yeah, yeah. In the like the subculture of punk, mm -hmm. punk community. Yes. Um, freshman year of high school, I sat next to a gentleman named Scott Phillips in first period. Um. What was the class? The class was uh, Miss Utter was her name, and she had cow, okay. cow themed okay. everything. She owned it. She, 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 she owned she it. Didn't, she didn't. It would have been. Yeah. It was. It was algebra. It was okay. algebra. Oh, okay. Um, Dude, real quick, freshman hit me. year, first period, health, first subject of the year, sex. So learn about boobies and stuff. Right away. And second period, gym class. So I'm, uh, you're way yeah, too just, you're way too horny going yeah, into gym class. Fucking believe it. Anyway. I took I took health in summer school like a real piece of shit. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? I just, took the unfailable class in summer school. <laughs> yeah. So Scott Phillips. Scott Phillips, who sang in a band called Lifelong Tragedy. <laughs> hmm. So we sat freshman year. You're yeah. sitting next wow. to Lifelong so, Tragedy. Man? So we sit next to each other. Our personalities are in sync. I um, grew up in a sort of a musical family. My dad was a radio rep for Electra Records and MCA Records. Wow. My uncle, his twin brother, was the head of promotion at Maverick Records, which was uh, Madonna's label. Right. So that was like kind of the family biz. So I was like, I'm music guy. All three of us yeah. have dads who are music guys. There you go. That's interesting. So you you could you remember being young and be like, yeah, you guys like music, but like me, I, you know, I, oh, yeah. I, I my really, dad is ripping yeah. Dracula notes at three in the yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. About that. My dad's um, writing music about God. Yes, would it's, believe. It's, Brutal. I wouldn't. Yeah, no, no, no. It was pretty. We would not. I would not believe it. Yeah, I would. I <laughs> shan't believe it. What shirt was he wearing? In freshman year? It must have been an AFI hoodie. Best besties. How old, may, how old may, are you? Maybe a Nerve Agents hoodie. I was 15. Are, are, are now I though? I mean. Now I'm 15. Still. <laughs> yeah, that's still you, 15. You, as a 15 year old, what year did you graduate high school? I graduated eight, at 18. That you're doing. This is awesome. This I is killing this. me. Yeah, no, you're doing. My great. head is doing backflips. Because I'm trying to think. You don't. The, I probably got into AFI around the same time. Mm -hmm. In the year, you know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They were my gateway. When band. did you graduate high school? Um, seventeen. You were seventeen. Yeah. What year? Seven. No, nah, two thousand six. Okay, I'm two thousand five. So oh, we're so, so we're very close. Right. Um. So Scott was really into hardcore. Sure. And so Which I'm in freshman year. That's yes. Yeah, going in, so this was first period. First semester of freshman year. I already like hardcore. Yeah, so, so he was so all summer. He's thinking, and he was young. If I sure, yeah. he was young for our grade too. He's a year younger than me, so he was. I mean, lifelong started. I think he was fourteen. Oh, fucking shit. cool. Um, and so he he introduced me to um, the scene and the genre of hardcore, and I was so enthralled because it was something I didn't was unfamiliar with. So yeah. I was like, "There's." There's music that I don't know. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Right. You know, you know what I mean. Chucklehead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah like. See. Yeah. There's a lot. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. I had the same trajectory, where I was like, "Oh, Blink 182 is cool." You know, whatever's on the radios, I kind of like more the more aggressive stuff. And then it was like Misfits, AFI. Right. As soon as I found out what those were, over. It was over. I was eyeliner falling. purchase, <laughs> hit. I was Xing up at school. Xing up with eyeliner. So was <laughs> AFI like the band? I mean, so this was before Sing the Sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a ten out of ten album. I, I One think, of the greatest ever. I think we would all agree. Mm -hmm. um, we so, were all there. Yeah. At the the the, the twenty year anniversary. Yep. Was it? 
I forget that it was 20. So yeah, and so the thing about AFI, they played the Phoenix Theater, which was board, which was in Petaluma, which bordered the town of Brunner Park. Where, Days of where we, Exactly, which AFI wrote a song about. So they were very recognized in the North Bay. Right. Yeah. So they were they were they were a big deal and got you know most all of us into into punk and hardcore. They, I mean, they're just like a perfect yeah. vessel band to go from. Totally. Not knowing anything to being all in. I'm because all in. you can go back in the discography mm-hmm. and see about early hardcore days right. and, and they've been about it. Perfect. And their influences were so broad that no matter which sort of subculture you belong to or spoke to you, you would find something in them that resonated. I mean with you, you look in that room at the Sing Sorrow anniversary thing and like yeah. right next to each other it was it was Bo, who's a who likes The Who and Peter Gabriel and AFI. Yeah, yeah. It was Brody King who likes Hatebreed and AFI. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was Colin Young who likes... Anthony uh, and AFI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Hans Zimmer. Oh, that's my big <laughs> too. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you say how when, when bands wear shirts in the promos God, and they yeah. wear it on their sleeve, that was very apparent with AFI. And that's like, good. It's totally. Like the best. It's the way it should be. Wear shirts in your promos, bands. So when when did you pick up an instrument or something? I picked up an instrument a year before. I had started, I I bought a purple Stratocaster. Well, my father bought me a purple Stratocaster for my birthday the summer before, um, because I I wanted to I wanted to be Prince. So Prince, so Prince came before punk music. Well, you. well, well before. Yeah, I um first time I saw Prince was in 1996. I was 10, Jam of the Year tour. Um, so that was like, and then the following Christmas, I got every one of his records. So that was my, Prince was my guy well before that. So I didn't get into guitar from rock. I wasn't a rock guy You're until- a Prince uh, guy. Yeah, I was a Prince guy. Cool. Prince I'm, is the guitar music that yes, you play. Yes, wow. yeah. Um, and then obviously getting into punk, you find other people who are just starting to learn how to play their instruments. And that's the beauty of the genres right. that you could join a band without really being that experience. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I mean that's hey man. That's the best this part. Day, yeah. 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 Best yeah. part. I'm I'll I'm oh. starting bands with guys so, over thirty who are like, yeah, I, I'll try to be in a band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Prince, people don't know, man. People don't think of him as this upper echelon guitar player, but we we've talked about this a couple of times. Nice. That fucking live while my guitar gently weaves solo. Worn out that tape, my man. That guitar is still on YouTube. Air. Yeah, it's still, still fly. I'm linking it in the description of this below. So click on that. It's it gonna is blow your unreal. Cool and if you on. really want to take a deep dive, Please. I found this. I can't remember the uh, the teacher's name, but there's a guitar teacher that breaks down that solo and the modes that he uses that are a bit unconventional for the key, but why it works, but why you think it wouldn't work. And it's like, it makes the the improv of that solo even more impressive. Well, how proficient were you at guitar in your first band? I was pretty. You could rip. I was pretty good, fast. Um, I t- I started taking lessons immediately, and I always <clears throat> always told my teacher to give me things that he knows for certain that I can't play. Um, Challenge. Challenge. So I was, and I, it just I'm not. I'm not trying to do a thing. Mm-hmm. It's, some, it's something that came natural to me and I practiced a lot and I had a teacher who taught me how to practice well. Um, so I was I was good fast. And how, how was that during your freshman year or was it quite- Yeah, so, so in my, yes, during my freshman year, I got, I would say is when I got So good. you became a consistent hardcore punk show goer and musician yeah. at the same time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, already yeah. things are- Things are, things things are, are moving. moving. Things yeah. are moving. Yeah. Things are getting, you're, yeah. You're fi- you figured out your world. That's right, that's right. You moved in. But world, here I am. <laughs> what was your first, very first band? My first band was called The Rubber Band. Sexy. <laughs> um, it was with, there was a band called Set It Straight. Oh, I remember Set It Okay, so the singer of Set It Straight, who's from Runner Park, later moved to Reading, um, was two grades older than me. So he was a junior and we started the rubber band together 
and it was like one of those bands where the rubber band the rubber band um, now, was this a thing not you were like, Collins and his rubber band you were like we need a name and then he was like I don't have any man. I just have this rubber band wait wait that's wait, a, no wait that, say that again dude it's kind of <laughs> the, the rubber band that is that's Colin Young right there <laughs> that right there that's Colin Young Sorry, I love it. Is it the the rubber band or the rubber band? One word. Rubber it's, band was it's one. The it's the item. The not rubber the band, band of rubber. Yeah, but the rubber band, like the band. So they're just so, rubber. Kind of. So I don't think we ever name. got to the point of stylizing it. <laughs> and it was one of those bands where like every song was a different genre. Yeah. You yeah, know. You gotta yeah, have one. That's of how the first band. That's are. how. There's just you one of those. Through beat down. Yeah. yeah. And you're covering the funniest shit. Yeah. yeah. Peter Gabriel. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Yeah, we were new. We were doing. Yeah, we were doing Peter Gabriel. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Yeah, yeah. And then we played the Phoenix once. Whoa, that's pretty. That's awesome. We, I remember calling Tom Gaffey, who owns the Phoenix. Just that's how you did it. Yeah. I called him. I, le- I left a message. Hey, I'm this person. I play in a band called This. Would love to play the Phoenix. Months later, Tom Gaffey calls me and goes, Hey. Going down my list, and it looks like we uh, owe you a show. Wow. We have a show with uh, Toast Machine, Inertia, and Exposure. Uh, we'd love for you to open. And we opened the Phoenix Theater once. You know, obviously, Ceremony went on to play the Phoenix Theater a lot. Yeah. And the first two homesick events we had at the Phoenix, I've, I have frequented the venue many times. It's still around? Then. It's still around. Oh. And Tom remembers. One of the last time I was there, he was like, I remember, man, I remember when you played with the rubber band. <laughs> and we were not, like, we like weren't a band. You know what I mean? Like wow. we just, we just, it barely existed. Yeah. You were, I mean, you bent, you fucking flung your way into his heart. But yeah, it's, like, it's to open yeah. as an unknown, a first of four. Yeah. And then re- he's like, he's a special, Tom Gaffey of the Phoenix is a, is a legendary figure wow. awesome. in Incredible. the North Bay. What were some uh, some you know marquee gigs that you saw as a youth that really affirmed that this is the thing that you wanted to be doing? There was a band called Resilience. There were like a street punk band that would play the Phoenix a lot, and that was those shows where I was like, oh, this is like not just a fun. This, this isn't just a new genre yeah. that I that is I'm absorbing, but it, it like kind of showcased the community aspect of it so those early resilient shows but like there was you know this is when an would come through the bay converge would come through the bay the that era you know 2001 that was like the first year but then i mean this was i was well into punk by then but when i think back about shows in like my late teens and early 20s that made me that really blew me away was it's look back and laugh uh, um, at Gilman. Um, I think this is the first ever look back and laugh. Shout out. On, on yeah. So it's funny. Years ago, I was listening to another a uh, another podcast. What? Uh, turned out a punk. Turned out a punk. Fucked up. Hey, buddy. Hey, Damien. And he was talking about look back and laugh and how underrated they are. And I, in the Bay, I think they're underrated in the grand scheme yeah. in the bay they were very much not underrated they were rated. they were very celebrated and just blew everybody away um every member every member of the band they, they were one of those bands where like you're like how did the five of you find each other yeah, yeah. there was like a bus stop band exactly yeah. Yeah. um <laughs> and every and live every member was essential mm-hmm. um but in the but my first but my first ever show that was like I knew I was going to a hardcore show right was the first Life on Tragedy show ah um, and it was your boys big it was, show it was, yeah, yeah right. the, the, they were my friends sh- band first show first friends band yeah really right right so yeah you feel like it's yours, you know? yeah exactly yeah exactly and it was them and beneath the ashes. At West Coast Worldwide in Sacramento. Oh, wow. Yeah. What? West Coast Worldwide. Not, Nike Hoods. Not, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, so that, that kind of changed it all for all of us. 
Yeah. Because Lifelong, you know, they were like an they were an active band who would play Gilman and right. would play like a show down here. Absolutely. So they were like, oh my god, we could. That's a po- That's a thing that's possible. Yeah, we can do yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there were our friends. Yeah. Like, Unheard of. You know. Uh, <laughs> and they were all in high school. Wow. So lifelong but tragedy yeah. opened open some doors for you. Lifelong tragedy is why is why the North Bay ex- exists. Wow. One hundred percent. You heard it here. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's on record. We're we're facts. Mints. We love Big, mints. I yeah. love it's all lore. We love it's yeah, all, yeah. It is all lore, yeah, all the way yeah, down. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. Let's uh <clears throat> let's get Bo over to his uh his uh his doctor's appointment here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doctor Heather's gotta fuck him up. Get to yat it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh this has been Beverly Hills Juice Club. I love this. Yeah, this was delicious. Is, I crushed it. I'm doing I'm trying so hard. You were talking about I'm I'm a usual I'm a I'm a three sip guy. Oh same. This is a ten. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> we'll see you at Holy Union. It is very hot. We're at Holy Union Tattoo. We are now joined by another guest of honor, Heather Bailey Anzaldo, co-owner and uh, resident tatter, president tatter at Holy Union. How are you, Heather? I'm great. How are you? So good. Sweat so hot. So off. hot, but yeah, you know, so, so much hotter when I'm with the hottest married couple <laughs> in the world, frankly, scientifically. Uh, how long have you guys been married now? <laughs> we are coming up on seven years. Seven. Mazel tov. Yeah. What was your first yeah. impression when you saw each other in the wild? Well. Well. Let me just let me just give you the story. Oh, I'm cringing oh, for it. I was in uh, a Whole Foods market, ah, and uh, Heather here was with a mutual friend of ours. We had never met. And we knew of each other. Right. How could you not? Of Same course. circles. <laughs> of course. How could course. you not? Our friend walks up to me, introduces us, and then she remarks at my Depeche Mode to my Depeche Mode tattoo. Violator tattoo. Yeah. And no Heather says, Oh my goodness, we have the same tattoo. Ugh. And yeah. I said, Yeah, but mine's bigger. Okay. Wow. Is that really what you said? It's true. It's true. The kids Facts. these days talk about a little thing called Riz. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was invented in that moment. And now here they are, years seven, later. Seven years on. Yeah. If not for the more. first time as a couple yeah. on film. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, Bo's here today to get yatted up. We got him full of juice and sugar. All uh, juiced up. Um, right. And then we're going to kind of go through the history of Anthony as a musician. Of of, uh, of Heather as a tatter, yeah. and just get down to the the lore of this of these two lovebirds. Just immerse ourselves in this beautiful city that we reside in. In the air conditioning as soon as possible. Yes. Yeah. Let's go inside. <laughs> Come on in, Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time as a couple, <laughs> Mr. And Mrs. Bobby. <laughs> Bob, what are you getting tatted today? I'm getting a Shawn Michaels inspired dagger mm-hmm. because Heather and I also share a love for Shawn Michaels. I think we all share love for wrestling. We do. Big time. Wrestling. Big so, time lovers. That's the other thing. That's the other So thing. many things in common. Heartbreak kids. Dancing. Now, let me ask you this. Please. Group. To the group. Which one of us was at <laughs> the uh, Shawn Michaels Razor Room ladder go. match in Madison Square Garden? You were there? I know the yes. answer. I know the answer. Holy was it you? Shit. Who was there? Well, it wasn't me. It was, it was Anthony. It Lowe. was me. Yeah. Forget about that all the time. Spoiled. Except they don't. Spoiled. Dude, when he when he pulls the belt off, oh. he falls really yeah, hard. That's yeah, a bump. Yeah, Big yeah like he bumps that looks hard. Painful. Yeah, and he got back up there for the for sure the money shot. Sure oh, had to. Had shot. to. No choice. <laughs> so wrestling's the best, and that's why it I'm is. getting a Shawn Michaels dagger. Shawn Michaels rocks. Mm-hmm. His is in the shape of an S. Did you know that? You got to. Are you gonna get a B? I so wish. Watch up, that, just like, <laughs> ah, yeah. Emily Rose B. Yeah. No, I'm not doing. She's that. thinking about it now. I can see. Yeah. I can see. The wheels <laughs> turning. Yeah. Let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about this because there's this. there's four four edgemen right here. Yes, Woo! and this is the first tattoo that Heather did on me. Oh, that's this is awesome. This is the first. This is the second time we ever met. Was was this was this tattoo? I'm thinking about getting the hardest, <laughs> the hardest tattoo ever. Will you marry? Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see yeah. that? Yeah. 
He's crying. He's an emotional guy. I feel you. I feel it. That's fucking awesome. I feel it. What a story. I feel it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's tell me about uh, finding, <laughs> finding, finding strength. How, yeah. yeah, how soon into your... Uh... Very, very soon. I'm, I've never... I've never drank alcohol. Yeah. So I found I found Straight Edge at the at the top of my um, of my entry into into punk, and that's really what yeah. allowed me to sink my teeth in. Straight Edge, Mount Rushmore. Ooh, bands or humans? Ba oh, whatever you want. Ooh. That's fine. <laughs> wow. Maybe two bands, two humans. Ba uh, bands, Minor Threat. Yeah. Um, we. What? Well. Do you not consider them a straight edge band? I do. Uh, de facto, I do. Yeah. yeah, de facto. Proto. They're they're the Proto. they're they're the Stooges. They did it. Yeah. They're they're the yeah. Stooges to straight edge, and Youth of Today is like the Ramones. Look at that. Oh, but but but, <laughs> but on certain days, I want to count the Stooges as a punk band. So on, on that day, I'll count Minor Threat. Um, it's inarguable. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they made it. Yeah, yeah. As as a to borrow a young term, Please. young with a capital Y. Please. Scientifically, <laughs> scientifically, um, infest. Ooh, that's great. a great answer. Look at that. Um, Look at the that. logo with the chain where you yeah. up. Fucking awesome. I mean, I gotta give it to Youth of Today because mm -hmm. they are, they like ritualized. Yeah, exactly. They 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 made the straight edge that we. Now know exactly. and love and sometimes are. And I I challenge by. you to listen to "Break Down the Walls," the song, and not just you're, it's, and not it's fucking good. It's just know? it's, it's good the American least, music, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's true. They brought it's like in, a club sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Song. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're vegetarian. Hey, we're fucking like we have our group of guys, like our youth group thing. We're doing something different. And hey, we're this thing, not like it's okay if you're not, but it was like that. And like, dude, we just might. It's the hardest, one of the hardest Ed songs ever. I mean, and so inspired, at the, you know what I mean? Like, you could tell, I mean, then that seemed like they really meant all that. And uh, yeah, incredible songwriters, the, the whole thing. What's your fourth pick? <laughs> they have straight edge songs, but they're not an entirely straight edge band. But boy, do I want to put an AFI. Oh, oh yeah. honorary, Our honorary, team, right? Mara, I, mean, I mean, like, come on. Dave has as much has yeah. as much to go. He he has a lot to go around. Say yes. Yeah. Say less. Say, yeah. You know? Yeah. Easy. One hundred percent. Easy. Yeah. I'm I'm with you. Yeah. I'll take it. I'm gonna. I know you are because of your policy on uh, how many band members. So have Harm's Way started off as a straight edge band. Uh -huh. Me, Chris, and James are all the original members. Are still straight edge. It's very difficult to find touring members, as I'm sure you know. Period. Touring members, period, who you can <laughs> yeah. hang out with who yeah. are also straight edge, who live yeah. in your area, yeah. who can play their instruments. Yeah. So we got two guys who aren't. Yeah. But I maintain that the three of us still are. So fuck it. Let's uh, let's get your chat started. Yeah, let's get going. Let's and get then going. we'll start talking ceremony. Cool. Woo. I mean, I know we all, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, but. but Razor, push. look, yeah, I mean, I like an Italian. <laughs> What's up with this Metallica cat? It's Metallica. Um, oh, a, dude, Metallica. a dude did it, and <laughs> all of that fell out. That's yeah, my cat's name. Yeah, I see that. All of it fell out. Looks it, great. It, like, how, like, do you find that tattooing, mm -hmm. tattooing on like bicep or like solid muscle lead to problems? Um, no, because I'm, I'm a, I'm a professional. Saw. We love it. I love it. Okay. In the 80s. As wow. So ceremony. Yeah. Tell me about how ceremony started. 2003, four, five. Um, so I say 2005. Love it. Because that's when we played our first show. Established is, is different then. But we uh, spot. recorded yeah. our demo in December of 2004. Ceremony established 2004. Yeah. Um, so I know there's, really? I, I feel so. I don't feel like the band really became a band until we were able to play live. Okay. So I say '05, but I, if if you say I'm wrong, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight you on it. I say that you were a pioneer before you thought you pioneered. Go on. So sexy. So, <laughs> um, so, so, so smells so good. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's on the demo? What's the track list? Curse. It's going to be a cold winter. 
uh, you're all the same, the living hell, the bad song, mm -hmm. and throwing bricks. Yeah. We actually recorded it. This is something that will interest the both of you and probably no one watching uh, from their the comfort of their couch mm -hmm. on their YouTube app, on uh, Apple TV. Thank you to the YouTube watchers. Oh. The demo was recorded uh, in detuning because JD and I played in a band called These Days um, that tuned in D, and we were just like, well, D we're- D standard? Yeah. Standard or drop? Oh, D standard, yeah. Um, and Alex, who was our original second guitar player, also played in These Days. So all three stringsmen of These Days started this band, so we were like, it'll be annoying to- To tune. To tune back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can't fucking tune for this no, whole band. No. Huh. No, this this intonation is locked in, so it's in D. Wow. Um, That's yeah. Crazy. So, yeah. Did you go up to standard later on? Then we went to as soon soon after that we went to E flat. Yeah. Because you Slayer tuning. Because you wanted we just wanted to be a little yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you think it's an E, but we're flat. But is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then from. Ronert Park, it's so, I know this is not the question that you asked, but it just got me, I'm in my own rabbit hole now by myself, as I am per usual. Mm -hmm. Biz as usual, locking our records. <laughs> um, half of Ronert Park, the album, is tuned between E flat and D, and the other half is tuned between E and E flat. Like, do you mean between, meaning like? Between the notes. So like Whoa. 440 okay. something. Yeah. Hurts, because uh, we just wanted so that nobody could fucking play. It. We wanted it to sound distinct, mm. and and really shot ourselves in the foot because now when we've had fill-ins and we have to relearn songs for tour. We're fucking tuning. <laughs> yeah, 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 I yeah, can't yeah. Learn yeah. It. yeah. What do you mean four forty-five yeah. cents? What yeah. is that? Yeah. <laughs> and then from then on, it's we've been in E standard, okay. but we started <laughs> in D in D in two thousand and four and five. Or five. Unbelievable. Four and or five. Now, something that, like, going back to Ceremony now for me, I was surprised how hard it is. And I think Thank at, you. at the time as a kid who's like, I like hate breed. Yeah. You know, obviously, to me, Ceremony is a different thing. Yeah. There's like... Different two, genre of music. But like... For sure. Barely. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like... What, you're one palm you to wave sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the song after Curse? There's a part in it that's just like, da, 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 da. Da, uh, just a hard ass O one three four. Yeah, 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 yeah. How? You know what? It what's crazy? It's it's two three five six, but it's in D, so it is O one three four. Ah, look at you, impressive. I know. I, yeah, that's that's the connection. Yeah, yeah. It's literally four hundred. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Not. Obviously, I've heard your Mount Rushmore, you know? Yeah. I know where you skew. You know where I basically. Yeah. Somewhere between Prince and Youth of Today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what was the hardest man as a, as a youth where you were like, I think I like this too? So, I know this is very close to, uh, in, in the, the, the spectrum that is Prince and Youth of Today, this is pretty much at Youth of Today. But we all worshipped negative approach, yeah. which I I know it's, you know, it, obviously it's it's Sexy. mostly fast. There's no, but and people kind of associate hard in in these modern times and heavy, which are different with, things. With yeah. yeah, yeah, and like a lot of times people will kind of they need something to be kind of slow or half time to be hard, which so I think that is. Obviously not how it works. If you do it right, the fast part can be the hardest part. Dude, but I mean, there are literal Morrissey songs that are hard. Of course. You know what I mean? Like that, it doesn't mean anything. Of course. Intention and presentation are hard. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. So we were just negative approach to worship. Okay. But, um, you know, trying to, being of the time where like tempo changes were uh, very, of that of that of that time you yeah, know time. where if you hear us now like there aren't like runner park has no tempo changes how, not how, a breakdown i don't think on that how whole much pre-production did you do on runner park because to me i find pre-production is what is great 
but also like when you're programming drums on a computer, yeah, you sometimes you're like, ah, I don't want to change the tempo. That would be a lot. When you say pre-production, yeah, or do you mean by myself or with the? With like collectively zero. That's sick. we have never done any. We have not demoed. We did not demo anything until our second record with Matador. Okay. Until uh, the L shaped man. L-shaped man. So I mean the demo is a, a demo. Yeah. Most of those songs arrived in other things. So by definition, right, you put that you put the L shaped man demos out. Yeah. To for the world to hear. Yeah. Which is a cool move. And that's the only thing we've ever demoed. So you were like, if we did this one this time, is- you got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not yeah. gonna leave this. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we went in the first time we fully we ever re- recorded those songs at all or even because we didn't. We're not the band that writes things and sends it to each other. Mm-hmm. We're me, JD, and m- myself, JD, and Jake are in the room together. Cool. Um, so no, no, no pre-production. First few ceremony shows. Yeah. How quickly do, do things start moving? Is the first gig good? Yeah, because we were selling and giving away our demo at the, the lifelong tragedy merch table um, and giving it. So we, our, our demo had been out for, for, for months. Were there, was there any crossover between ceremony and lifelong tragedy? That's why ceremony was able to work because we were the only band in the North Bay that didn't share any members with lifelong. So Sabretooth and these days, zombie. so yeah, Sabretooth zombie these days, um, Hammer Time, all these bands had members of Lifelong Tragedy. You ever run into MC Hammer up there? I've never seen MC Hammer in Oakland. I heard he's like run shit. I, I'm, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> uh, I've heard he's like yeah, no, a he's, legit he's, bad mode. Yeah, no, like he's he's legit for sure. So sick. So cool. Yeah. He's the man. Shout out to MC Hammer. Cool. Yeah. yeah. MC Hammer if you're if you're yeah, watching. Somebody somebody yeah, yeah, happy. Yeah. If you never heard of them, <laughs> check them out. Yeah, got these <laughs> pants, you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, first, the first few gigs are good. Yeah, we toured together very early on. Yeah, I think it was two thousand nine. Was it the Half Heart Blacklisted tour? It's yeah. Half Heart Blacklisted ceremony, and uh, let down and let down and our band. Convicted. Oh wait, oh wait, yeah, so, super so, early on. So was that post still nothing moves you? Yep, and they were. Oh my god! White hot everywhere we went. We were east. It was the East Coast thing and like Detroit and stuff. And yeah, were, so we yeah. So that was like a full U.S. and we had like different regionals, like bands doing like chunks. Uh, we were lucky enough to have y'all on one of the chunks. So yeah, uh, but yeah. So we were just. I mean, I love obviously love love everyone in Lifelong, but we were just so lucky to not have any of their members because they were always going to be. Like at this point, they were like touring Europe yeah. and like they were, they had opportunities. I saw uh, them left and right. Yeah. Totally. Up and down. So we, we, we weren't bound to their schedule, which allowed us to, you know, go off. Absolutely. And flourish. And flourish. Flourish you did. <laughs> so, so the, the violence, violence kind of like compilation thing yeah. comes out. And then it's all these songs finally on one thing. You guys become this like full time touring entity yeah. in the time of dude you like look at that roster the like the like 2006 2007 touring band roster and it's every band that headlines every fest now. yeah like it's, fest now fest. yeah yeah it's pretty wild your class it's i mean yeah hall of fame really. uh, we're we were lucky to be around such uh inspired and good Bands, but yeah, I mean, like us, Half Heart, Blacklisted, TUI, I think it was like starting like 08, 07. 07. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, killed, they killed a lot of Cold Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cold yeah. World, Cold like, Terror World. was still. Terror there. was like, exactly. Um, y'all were not that much later. No, Harm's Way was just, we started in 06, but we were very, very invested. That's all we wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until like 2011. Got it. Yeah, yeah. We really kind of. Um, ten. And yeah, good class. Good class. Great class. Something I want to I want to highlight. Okay. Because in that time, it was like, if you were different in any way, ah, you it was it was maybe not going to work like yeah. personally yeah. between a lot of people. And then you guys come around, and you're in drag. 
Yeah. It's genuinely so ahead of your time. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. It's, well, there were, there were conversations. I remember it was like, have you heard of ceremony? Oh, is that the guy who, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, yeah, just like on literally, especially at that time yeah. to not be wearing fucking cargo camo shorts. Yes. Nike SBs and, and yeah. shit, like, and to be embraced. Yeah. With that, to be, to be so musically and personally undeniable mm -hmm. that all these people in, in Jordans and, and flat bill hats embrace you. Uh, I mean, definitely in high school, I was, I presented myself that way all the time throughout high school. Ceremony started my, in my senior year of high school. Um, but I mean, I was just doing what we all do. You know what I mean? I mean, you guys talk about who do you do? I was just doing who, who I did. Mm -hmm. I loved Iggy Pop and Prince and Susie and AFI. Yeah. And and David Bowie, and, David Bowie yeah. and Mike Ness. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, like yeah. like to me, there was precedent. Robert Smith, Absolutely. you know what I mean. And within like the broad punk umbrella of people who were androgynous, mm -hmm. you know, and and were glam. So to me, I, it didn't feel I, I I didn't I didn't feel like I was taking any sort of like stance risk or risk. Or I was all the only thing I was was just honest with myself, and I understand. You know, I mean, I grew up in Northern California and I, you know, and like fans like the nerve agents and AFI who, you know, wore makeup and like, you know, covered David Bowie and wore Sister the Mercy mm -hmm. shirts um, were prevalent. So and you drive 50 miles south and it's insane. Totally, totally. Right. Um, and I didn't realize how sort of uh, how much of a highlight there was on, I guess, my personal aesthetic at the mm -hmm. time until we started touring mm -hmm. and um i had a lot a lot of words were said to me in a lot of oh, dude. <laughs> places and it was funny because a thing that happened so much then was there'd be some we would play a show and then someone at the show would be like yeah dude i was with my friend and they were like who is that yeah f word yeah. and then they saw that it was you and then you guys got up and did that and they were like Oh no, like that guy's cool. And I was like, fuck you. Yeah, fuck, fuck you. Yeah, like, no. oh, I'm now that I do something that you think oh, that I play guitar. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, you like a thing I did for 10 seconds. So now I'm not an F. Like, yeah. fuck off. Fuck yeah, off. That, that's true. that would happen. And like, the, but the person telling me would always be like, but I kind of always knew you were cool. It's like, well, you're telling me this. Yeah. Kind of so I know you are. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not. I mean, um, very, you know what? It, it, at the time, I remember equating it to like TSOL, how sure. they would, he would dress and drag sometimes, yeah. just kind of do whatever and then be ass like it didn't matter. Well, that brings me to the first time I met you. Yeah. I don't know what to expect, you know? <laughs> Personally, I'm just like, man, I wonder what Anthony's like. We've never talked before. Yeah. And then the, the, I'm greeted with, what's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, bro, Anthony. And it was a, a legitimate, like, lifelong friendship. <laughs> Which is, um, speaking of Shawn Michaels, that's how a lot of people have sort of described meeting Shawn Michaels for the first time, because he was a kind of a small, yeah. you know, I guess the word cruiserweight wasn't really thrown around that much. I mean, he was a small, like, very, you know, he wasn't one of the big giants yeah. of professional wrestling. He was then. bigger when he was with the Rockers, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, all gas. Zero crowd, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you have this, you know, Kevin Nash meeting him. He's, he was like, he's the biggest six foot guy you've ever yeah, met. Yeah, in yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm just like a bunch of different things. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't put me in a box. No, there's man. no box here. I brought yeah. it up the, the last time we saw each other, which was here. Yeah. Um, but on that tour in Detroit, while Ceremony was playing. I just want to document this because I don't think it was documented. Sure. It was so sick. I think the I think your singer pulled down a projection screen that was at the front of the stage at the Magic Stick. So it covered the front of the stage and Anthony, shirtless, long hair, playing a, only a guitar part, like walked around and was just like, it was just him in front of a silver screen. That's cool. And like, I remember thinking like, oh, this is, this is a moment. This is fucking awesome. Yeah. Okay. I was, you know, a lucky to have surrounded myself with people, you know, not to get overly sincere on you, mm -hmm. who, who, who just supported 
who just supported who we were at our core. I mean, which is funny because like, if you know anyone in ceremony, you'd be like, they're, everyone's like such a total freak. And I took up a lot of like visual mm -hmm. space. Right. So a lot kind of gets highlighted on me, mm -hmm. but like take, even take me out. Like most of the other people in ceremony didn't aesthetically reflect like, sure. like, like kind of like what was in vogue at the time. There's mm -hmm. like, weirdo yeah freak tucked like, in white shirts yeah yeah, yeah yeah but then lyrically saying like i like fuck god <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm yeah. literally an upside down <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. that's objectively sick yeah, that's yeah. Like what i look for that's a yeah. deicide lyric yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like ceremony was singing deicide lyrics <laughs> yeah, with, um, with, with, while you were wearing a blonde yeah. wig and they did <laughs> yeah yeah I, I wish that everybody that time had the eyes of the world now because it was just like it sucks to me that if there was if there was even one second where you felt like, damn, am I like am I doing the wrong thing by by being myself? You know, like just but you've opened doors for people to do that now and to, to feel like themselves and, and to for the world to embrace it and not think twice about it. So. And it's it's and again, we're piling on piling on Anthony right now. So, but it's also no, like so sexy it's cool. real punk shit. Yeah. That's that's real punk shit. See, that's the thing, because to me this this community was where you go to do that. Right. And then like I love hardcore. We all do. Yeah. I mean Why were you? Oh, I mean come on. Mm -hmm. But I was a little I was confused a lot and especially in, in that era how like um how male bro click jock it was at times i was like but isn't this the place where we're like subversive and we have ideals that differ from like what we've been sort of taught our whole lives and i think now it's gotten a, it's gotten way more diverse it's, obviously it's jocks who will kill you for saying something homophobic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i think yeah. that's beautiful yeah yeah <laughs> totally 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 when, um, when in the in the timeline of ceremony did you know that there was going to be like a pretty major sonic shift when it came to you never never no i mean every record we never like you know, again, we've never done any pre-production. We've never talked about what we're going to do when we go in to work on a record. Mm -hmm. um, we were so young. Like, when our first 7-inch came out, three of us were in high school and Ross had just graduated. So cool. And 2006, so it was, all of us weren't out of high school until after that tour that we did. Yeah. Well, you know, really? you were in high school? Then? Jake, our drummer graduated in 08. Oh, all of us. I see. Yeah, 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 all of us. Yeah, yeah. So like, we were so young and still yeah. like growing and involving so much yeah. as, as people that it was just, you know, if you, our sort of, if you look at the bands that you started when you were 14 and what you do now, yeah. you'd be like, wow, we just live that within ceremony. Yeah. And you're, and those songs have, have lived with you and people are and you know, themselves. Sh here. Shout out to uh, Ross because those, that first, the demo for seven inch and violence violence, he was like, he had all the lyrics written for, for those before we would like, He'd be like, no, that's not like that's not good enough for what I wrote. It's not timeless. Yeah, it's not. Because wow. the lyrics are timeless. So we, so it was the first band that you know, I, we, you know, you would start bands for like a couple of weeks and you know play like a show and then it went. You know, we had a lot of bands like that that were very short lived, but not that much thought. That were like fun, hanging out with your friends, expressing yourself, so on and so forth. But Ceremony was the first band where. I had ever had anyone say, no, like, not that riff. Your demo sticking with you throughout your discography. Unheard of. As a thing people want to hear is, I'm sure to you, the, music, the musician, like, you'd rather die than play Curse again. I've, I've ended up in a place where, because like, like every person that's ever been in a band, mm -hmm. you think the the th what you've done most recently is the best thing that you've done. Of course. Done. And, I re and I do really think that. I think yeah. like uh, the songwriting and the performance and the production 
on in the spirit world now is us is is us at our best right but i recognize that a ceremony demo or ruined seven inch is closer to the ceiling of that respective genre than what we're doing now to that to our, a new record now's respective genre yeah i mean the, the evolution has to be taken into account right and like i think have you made peace with with like yeah no i'm now i'm i i i'm and i'm so flattered and grateful that we have any music that is sort of uh I'm, not, I'm trying not to put myself over. Put it over I'm, I'm trying to say this without putting myself yeah. over and, and just being sincere. Sure. But that some that there are that people consider timeless, you know. Um, so I don't think of songs like "Sick" or "Curse" or "Doldrums" or whatever, like the songs that we have to kind of play every night. Uh, uh, like I don't, I'm, I'm not bothered by them. Okay. I'm so grateful that we we're able to write these songs that I'll tell you that what, people want to hear. I'll tell I mean, you what I did before this. Huh? As I ran through the ceremony discog. Discog? Brother. Can we can so can Brother. we get an honest ranking? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I would say Runner Park 1. Okay. As it's one of the greatest opening tracks in the history of punk music. Thank you. I love, I mean, and, and that's the thing, I love that song. And I don't I know, love, and I, I don't, the, the crazy thing is like, it's I It's refreshing don't, to hear. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean. Yeah. It rocks. I think it's a great song. And the, there's not, there's, for the first two minutes, there's only one note. Yeah, that's what it's I like. like. It's like, <laughs> imagine, like you know what I mean? Imagine like, that note was ginger, ginger, ginger. <laughs> that's the same mindset. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You're doing Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in your own way. Okay. <laughs> so runner park number one. Uh -huh. Spirit World Now, number two, probably. Because, yeah. you know, I was, for, there was a brief moment where I was learning some songs to maybe play some drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so right. I, was, I was diving in. Like, and, oh, this we could be and, and our friendship really bloomed from when we recorded that to when it came out. So mm -hmm. you, you like heard songs before they came out. Yes, I did. So on and so forth. I, I, and it's, there was, uh, that, that was a nice thing to be like, oh. Yeah. Isn't it fun? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. Um, Exclusive. Special. Violence, violence. Probably three. Just that's that was my. Sure. Yeah, I yeah. was a kid. Yeah, that's. Know? Yeah. So and then going back was like, you know, there's a, even in my own discography, you like to go back and go, does this hold up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Thank you. Were you living here when yes. that came out? Yes, was. Okay, so and was we were like here, all the like time. ceremony was a very California yeah. thing for the first. And and when I say that, I don't mean like we were really big in California. I meant like it was kind of really only recognized in Cal. Like and I guess most bands, it's like that. Yeah. Like your local community mm -hmm. raises you more. Well, like but, the whole state in yeah. ceremony. <laughs> like we, <laughs> we, you like know, yeah. the that first within that first year things were happening to us that we never you know, like people singing our songs that w who we weren't friends with yeah like low bars you know what i mean like yeah. being able to play outside of petaluma right like, these things were like oh my god and then we got booked on the hardcore fest in the mid-aughts uh posi numbers posi numbers oh really i didn't yeah. ceremony played posi numbers we played at 11 30 on the last Pause Emmer's Fest. Wow. TM. Cool. <laughs> GMT? AM. Oh. 11.30 AM opened on the Sunday, but we were like having these really good reactions in California mm -hmm. and um, and then we go there and it's like the, it's yeah. kind of the only hardcore fest yeah. and no one, Nothing. No, which of course, why would they? We only had a demo out, but that just shows you that uh, at the event that showcases all of the young, the hardcore bands, we were still not on the radar. But in California, around Where the time that you was in North it was in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, Wilkes yeah, PAHC. Where, what, what were you wearing? 
you know? I do. I was wearing, <laughs> um, I had long dyed black hair mm -hmm. and I was wearing these like really thick, chunky mm. pinstripe mm. pants, like be almost Beetlejuice. Ah. Oh, so your, your prom outfit? They were the bottoms to my prom outfit. <laughs> Played now we got we got the, yes. the wife anecdotes here. Yes, yeah. yes, the bottoms to my problem. And you know, uh, Pennsylvania sometimes a red state. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you a real know. swing. State. I yeah. I was afraid at that show. Yeah. There were uh, showgoers coming up to me. I remember this one person. I will I'll name drop them off camera to you too. Um, who? propositioned me in a uh, aggressive and facetious way oh. to uh, sh have me sh uh, show them my pussy oh. um, during the show. Did you do during it? During the show. I didn't do it. I left, my pussy was... was it's the first time <laughs> I'm hearing this. I think maybe I've, I've, you, no? I've told you the full story. Um, I mean, there's just I'm so... I'm on fire right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It um, was, when you, it, it's such a cliche thing to see, be like, ah, oh, it's a really different time. Yeah. But yeah. my God, it and was. it's not that long ago. It's no. really not. No. I mean, yeah, it was, it was 18 years ago. So how does that make this you month. feel about the state of punk today? I think that uh, I'm elated that it's people are, I mean, you know. That would be said with like so much pride now, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Or there'd be some like someone getting their ass beat. Oh, they would be killed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm so proud of where yeah. of where hardcore is yeah. at right now. Um, not and not just within its like ideals. It's, I mean, especially within its ideals and what is now accepted. But the genre itself is a lot more diverse. Absolutely. You know, it's um, you know, a Pazimers O five like. Most of the bands sound rather similar. Yeah. Where uh, an Outbreak Festival, or even a Sound and Fury Festival, there's a That's lot, right. like hardcore means a lot more now than it did. Cold Boy years. and Never Ending Game back to back last yeah. year was like a, was an incredible example. Of right. It. This year you have, was it Twitchy Tongues then High Biz or Twitchy the God's High Biz, uh, Model yeah. Actress, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cold World. Yeah. Cold World. Yeah. 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 Um, that was a beautiful I think, thing. I, I assume you share our viewpoint of like, whatever we consider this hardcore or punk rock or whatever, like it really doesn't matter the notes or the production or what you sound like. It's all totally, you know, and I think, I think that's what connects us being in bands and touring where it's the second you, you feel like somebody gets it, that's it. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. That's all I give a shit about. When ceremony goes down, da, 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 da. <laughs> I go, oh, they, they, they get it. You really felt that. I really felt that. I, know. Felt that. Oh, yeah. I really, I felt that. So, anyways, L shaped man. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a pop, I'm a pop boy. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I know. I love that record. Yeah, I love yeah. That record. Um, still nothing's mo still nothing moves you. Mm -hmm. I'm the least familiar with Zoo. Yeah, those are the two that the world at large are the least familiar i see so i'm sorry for being Zoo is still nothing moved. there was it's which is weird because they're in between Hits, we yeah. like like we've had an odd like one one forward one back one forward one back sort of like our whole sort of musical career when which, did zoo come out do you remember 2012 2012 when did and i'm, I'm not trying to lump no. everyone together but when did hyperview come out third 15, 16. It was it later? Yeah, it was that later. much later? Okay. Yeah, I think that and L shaped were sort of. Maybe that's what I'm. Yeah, maybe is. I'm mixing the two. Yeah, up. yeah. Um, I really like. I was very much on board, but I was really surprised um, because, again, this is kind of before my own personal uh, musical awakening. This guy. So I liken him to. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm doing reruns now. Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm, I reckon him to uh, Michael P. S. Hayes. Yep. Who, when interviewed. Oh about everything creatively in wrestling that has ever been successful, 
says, I didn't think it was going to work. I never said that. <laughs> anything. I never said it wasn't going to work. I was just surprised at the right. band who I saw people beating ass to yeah, yeah, yeah. put out records that were so sonically tough. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, I, I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> saying that's what happened in this, in this oh, Yeah, your, your evolution is truly like, I, I think it is gradual. It, Definitely. If you listen and like, look, we all as musicians, we, we want everyone to be paying very close attention to everything that we do, all the things that it's we do. Never and it's a, that's an unfair, I realize that the, the expectation that we have for our audience is at times un, unfair. Yeah. That said, if you <laughs> listen to our entire front to back. Which I it is gradual. Just did. <laughs> Which you said it's gradual. It let me gradual. tell you, it's like a straight up like graph. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. A, it is a sonic graph of growth. And I mean, I'm just so lucky that we could play a show where it's like people dance, people mosh, pe people do all of the things, and everyone is letting each other do the thing to the respective genre they're supposed to do to that respective genre at that time. And sometimes there, there are people who do all of, all of it. But um, that's a person who grew with you. Totally. Yeah, right? And like, Ooh. and Ooh. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm just so, you know, how would you make the ceremony? Uh, um, <laughs> I think not necessarily best, just favorites. Yeah. Favorites. Um, Spirit World one. Um, the newest record should be your favorite record. Yeah. What's, what's the to point? any artist. What's the point? Don't what's do it point? if it's not your favorite. What's the point? Um, probably then L Shape Man, which is the one. I mean, I'm, I, I, this won't be full chronologi uh, reverse chronological because who wants the who wants that information? But but that would be that would be probably second. Mm -hmm. Then Runner Park. I mean that thing is special. Yeah, it's objectively. I just yeah. Is that, is that the hit? Is that like the crowd favorite? That's the one I think that will yeah will the, the the record that most most people who consume our band will envision first when they think of of us. Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, it 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 fits many of our criteria when we talk about what a perfect record should be. Mm -hmm. Like production's crazy. The production is cr it's crazy. Dude. So. It's huge. So, okay. So do you think that we're getting really in the weeds now? No, no, no this is good. As someone who just listened to it yeah. and give it to me straight, oh, daddy. Well, I will. You're daddy right now. <laughs> yes. Daddy. Is the bass mixed too high? No. Okay. No. I, I thought the bass was mixed too high. And Dan Rathman, who is a genius, he recorded uh, Tragedy, fucking uh, Iron Lungs, all the, all the, Frank, a lot of the Frank Record stuff, all the, but he, he's a bassist, incredible bass player. And I was like, do you think the, you know, we're, we're mixing the record together. I'm like, do you think the bass is too loud? And he was like, he, 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 he did a little thing, a, a little ego stroke where he was like, you know, I just think that the, the bass and the guitar on this record are just, are just so exceptional that I just think it'd be a shame to not, to not be showcasing them. And I'm like, what did you just think? You're, right. You're right. Oh, You're no. right. And now when I hear it back, I'm like, oh, the bass is so loud. I'll no. tell you why I, cares? why I don't think so yeah. is because the bass frequency is so different. Sure. The, the bass is filling up such a different frequency right. that while it may be prevalent, it's not taking away from. No, I right. think it is a type of punk music where a loud bass only contributes. Sure. sure. I do remember, do you remember um, the white when people would make up lyrics to yeah. sick different ones? No. One of my, my favorite one was. So I, lo I love finding lore. This is lore. That I, that I was. I know you've never heard this one, and I'm going to hit you with it, and I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I'm already. Ready? I'm all, it's already my favorite thing you've said today, <laughs> and I haven't heard it yet. Sick of Obama, <laughs> sick of Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Oh my god. This was Colin. Thing of all time. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Got it, yes. You'll never hear it any other way ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are they saying? Um I believe he says head trauma. Not a fucking chance. <laughs> that is a, it is a hundred percent syrup. Lyrics. You can't fool me. Um, 
So we're on our park on the Um I'm gonna break up Violence, Violence, and Ruined here. I get that. Um, yeah, right. And put the Ruined seven inch probably at four. Mm -hmm. I feel like for what we are going for, it's like exactly mm -hmm. what it what it's supposed to be. And what just the state of hardcore at the time was was begging for. And like, I'll go back, you know, and hear Zoo, you know, the, our first record where we sort of like officially weren't yeah. making hardcore right. songs anymore. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff on Runner Park that like is not hardcore, but yeah. most of it is a, is like a objectively punk yeah. hardcore music. Zoo is the first one that isn't. And I look back, I'm like, oh, we've gotten we've gotten so much better at writing like melodic bass it's, uh, it's learned, man. you know so i so suppose that one i think it has moments but i feel the op i don't feel that way about the ruin seven inch at all i'm like for that for the thing that we were going for mm. it's i would not change a thing okay so i'll probably ruin there then probably zoo violence violence the lp that right. doesn't include the ruined seven because that's the thing. No, no. The C D the C D and the and the digital, the ruined seven inches on Balance Violence. So people think when when people think of Balance Violence, they think of like those songs yeah. being included and obviously they're not. Yeah. And that and that has shifted the conversation about Balance Violence a lot. Sure. Because streaming just that's all the only thing. Yeah. That's all you know. That's totally. all they know. Totally. Um and probably still nothing at the at last, I think it's an interesting record. Yeah. I think it's, uh, I think we needed to kind of have that moment where we were like, okay, where do we, you know, I kind of, when you hear, whenever you've heard like Metallica talk about injustice. Now he's listening. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, they always talk <laughs> about, here. Yeah. yeah, they, they needed. <laughs> Big pop. Yeah. Big pop. God. They needed to go to the end of the line to realize that they needed to go somewhere else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're writing mean, like, nine-minute songs that sound like shit. Right. You know. I get it. I and, get what you're saying. And then they, they needed Bob Rock. They needed they, something yeah. to reel them in. And like, those songs were just like, they were so technical. And I feel like Still Nothing Moves You was our end of the line for, you know, we couldn't I don't feel like we could have got any darker. Right. Um, so it, that record needed to exist for Runner Park mm. to, to happen. Absolutely. Um, so I think that we tried a lot of stuff on it that we've never, you know, that w was really, we got to be really creative, but I just don't think it's as, it's, you know, as good as all of our other stuff. It happens. It happens. happens. We've, all got, we've all got one. And we have, you know, if you and if you include the remix album, to still nothing uh, to uh, in a spirit one now. We have seven LPs. Wow. You know, so it's like you should be proud. One has to be. Oh, dude, of course. Statistically, of course. mathematically, yeah, scientifically. I like them all the same. Yeah, they're yeah. all my children. Oh, they're all. They're all, they're all yeah. How can it's you? Not how, how that can works. you choose? It's not how that works. One sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have any like? Do you have a favorite tour ceremony ever done? So it's funny. I was listening. This is not going to answer your question. Perfect. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's what they want. You were talking. I was listening to your episode with Jamie from Code Orange. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't re remember the exact context, but you guys were talking about, you know, just opportunities that you yeah. um, have been given. And, and you mentioned how Twitching Tongues hadn't gotten a support tour until 2017. We have not done like a proper support tour ever until 2022. In terms wow. of Holy shit. Really? Now, how can that be? We've done tours with Blacklisted right. and Hot Power yeah. where it's like every day someone's someone has to be somewhere. So we have the difference in guarantees is 50 to 70. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. And we did. Um, I guess we did an entire, uh, we, we supported Titus Andronicus on a, uh, 48 day U S tour. 
in 2012. Um, so I guess that's, but we- Are there even 48 cities in America? Check this out. It was a 44 day tour. There was a bunch of days off. Okay. On the days off, we played every day. And two of the days we played twice. Ah. So on a 40, on a uh, 44 day US tour, we played 46 shows. But no. no. That's what we did once. Don't do it. <laughs> That's what we did how once. Is, how's yeah. Europe for ceremony? <laughs> there it is, wait. <laughs> Ah, the there are places song. where we do where it's where we do well, but it Berlin. It took a long time. Yeah, dude. Um, so we headlined Sound and Fury tw- 2007. Oh, and boy, it, it was. And it, it was, was like we were like we. It was a, a true like uh, moment in our, in in our sort of. I was 15. Uh huh. Oh. I was. In the it's men. Adorable. I'll be doing that. Were you crass spin kicking the ceremony? No. Crass I intro. Whooping, I was whooping ass for sure. <laughs> oh, yes, the crass, yeah, crass intro. Awesome. Um, oh, yeah. So, That's okay, sick. so you were at that show. Yeah. It was, we, we had a good it time. Fun, we, we, we had a good time together, Absolutely. okay? <laughs> we toured from there to the East Coast. Mm. You know, what, nine shows, eight <laughs> shows, how, however many shows it takes to get there. Then Phoenix, four. Austin, <laughs> yeah. Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm there. Done. <laughs> Philadelphia. Flew from there mm. to, I totally lied, by the way. We've definitely done support tours. I'm about to hey. exemplify one hey. right now. I lie on your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, are, what are we talking about? I'm making all this up. Um, flew from the East Coast to start our first European tour with Half Heart and Bane. So great. So this is two weeks after Dude. we just had we just headlined Sound of Fury, like a set, like seven, set of a lifetime, and of like the, the most like the, the the most recognized yeah hardcore fest in America. Yeah, first show sold out. We're like, where was it? Be awesome. It was at where I think it was Leipzig. Okay, what's the place that we all have played a million times in Leipzig? Is it like the the like park district kind of place where it's like yeah. arena youth center? Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yes. Arena is arena. Who is that? That's, that's Vienna. Vienna. Oh yeah, you're right. No, right. That's Vienna. We played there with GB on that tour. Different story. Um, I believe it was Leipzig. Leipzig. Okay. And we take we walk on stage, packed house, have heart and Bane fans. To the to the ceiling. To the rafters. Ask the ankles. I don't know if one person knew one word to our songs. And it was like, oh, okay. We we haven't done Wow. And like I didn't I don't I didn't feel entitled to a reaction or but I just figured that I was like, oh, because we were able to do what we did in a and we just headlined the biggest thing where we're from. Wow. What's this going to be like? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure it should be good. And what there a was like, position. that's yeah. amazing. There were like, that was also really, it was like a, a really long tour, like a 30, 30 to 40, five and a half week Euro, European yeah, those tour. Were those 30 were long. 30 to 45 long. and a half week tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 30, 30, <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30 to 40 days slash five and a half, five and a half, half. week tour. And so there was long. There was probably, there were, I could probably count on one hand, maybe it would bleed into two of shows where we got like a, a, a good pop, reaction. A were they in the UK? So it was funny. Everyone was like, I know it's, you guys aren't doing that great here, but trust me, once you get to the UK, you're going to slay. Yeah. And it was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have that experience either. Um, so it took us a long time to sort of get, um, to get, to a place where, you know, European fans were receptive to us. I dare say that it's easier, like infinitely easier at home than trying to get over in Europe. Which is the same for them trying to play here. I feel like, yeah, and it's even like, it's a lot harder for them to get over in the States. When they do, it's real lightning in a bottle kind of thing. It's, it's, I can name probably 10. And there's there's something that hardcore is like a a truly American genre of music. 
you know, where punk is punk British is, is, you know, obviously yeah, I, is not I, as much. I said exactly that during our, our live thing in Manchester right. was like, you guys invented it, but we changed it and made it in right. weird things, but slaughtered it in barbecue sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. Um, that ja I mean, jazz and hardcore are like the American that's what genres, we that's what we got. you know, and hip hop. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For right. sure. And I think the same could be said. I mean, how many, how many rappers or hip hop artists have gone uh, abroad have really gotten over in the States? Not a, not a lot. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's very, it's I a very similar. Yeah, I need, yeah. I know you. Oh, 21 Savage. That's about the only one I could. He's not. He's well, British. He's British? Yeah, there was a big reveal that he was British like mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Really? It, like, they like broke the enemy. <laughs> Oh, he's from like Alaska. No, and then yeah. there was a bunch of memes about him being like a Batman villain, and it's the oh, yeah. yeah. great <laughs> day on the on the online. Although there is a there is a type of a, a, a subgenre of hardcore that I feel like is bigger in Europe than than here, right? Yeah, it's and like 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 there are bands who do better oh, in Europe than oh, here. Oh fuck yeah, and, we are very and, not much that yeah, anthemic no. sing along. Yeah, kind of. What's what's the band? Is it Risk It? Brisket? It? Risk It? Oh, Risk, Risk It. Risk it. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, no. They, you know, like, they're fucking huge though. That kind of shit. Yeah. Absolutely. There's there's American bands that yeah. can tour Europe and yes, not. the bands we're talking about are American yes. bands. Yeah, for sure. Bowie hungry? Bowie, Bowie hungry. Well, we're doing what Anthony wants to do today. We're vegan today, by the way. Yes. Also, so out of respect. I got oat milk in my coffee. Me too. Kings. What, right. what should we eat, Anthony? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I would suggest that we go to Monty's Good Burger. It's up the street. Um, I think it in the in the Venn diagram that is myself and y'all and Hard Lore. It it like it real that that center section is is large. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I. I've been there with you before, you know. And this is this is I, true. I eat a, I'll eat a vegan burger. Do you want to tell the story? Do we? Do you want to tell the yeah, story of, of it now or, or until we get to Monty's? Am I? Should I tell that one? Do you think? Yeah, because you yeah. Into that? Yeah, because it's a good full circle moment of like, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Tell yeah, it. I'm tell here it. Now. Tell it there. Okay. <laughs> we'll tell it there. <laughs> See you at Monty's, Heather, my beloved, gorgeous queen, uh, matriarch of the Insalda family. The aliens, all the family. <laughs> when did you start tattooing? 19 years ago. Oh, when you were mm -hmm. five years old? Yeah, <laughs> too oh. kind. What What made you want to open Holy Union? Co open Holy Union. Co open. Yeah. Oh, just... Um, I just didn't want to work anywhere that already existed in Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah. I did. I tried some spots and then I was like, this isn't working for me. Yeah. I need my own space. You want to be your own boss. Yeah. Pretty Choose big you. endeavor. Yes. I'd say. I feel like every tattooer just wants to work for themselves. Uh, one, or alone. As they, you mean you should. Yeah. Realistically. Yeah. I won't tell your employees that, but <laughs> I remember very vividly the conversations of like, I think. You I'm were there. You were that. there. That's right. I was like, like, I'll put, you know, I'll pull out a loan. What do you need? You know? That's right. <laughs> to did. this day, I still, I still. Direct there, quote. So, yeah. I said, Grandma's gonna die someday. <laughs> I'll find out where it's going. And I'll give it to you. Don't worry about it. She did die. I yeah. didn't go to me. Uh, <laughs> of course. So you know, I just wanted to say how proud of you. Because yeah. this was a dream, you know. And now I, it's very. How very, long ago did it open? Because I was, I'm new. I'm new to this friend group. This is new for me. Welcome. New. Welcome. Very new. When did you open? Well, we signed the lease in January of 2020. Yeah. Yeah, we did. So that was scary. It was, but then ultimately we we're like, who cares? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Let's go. Because it's still like isolating in a tattoo shop. Yeah. Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Pretty yeah. reasonable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mask up. Mask up. Yeah. Glove up. They're, and the tables Fine. are six feet apart. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sanitary. Sound of sanitary. What's up? What's your, what's your ideal? What's your Mount Rushmore tat music? Tat shop music? Ooh. Because to me, like I, there's a couple things where I'm like, I mean, tat shop metal as a genre is maybe the worst. It's the, it's real. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, is. It like is real. it's what is it? It's like define tat shop metal to me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like 
Pentagram. Oh, okay. Oh. See now, I like. I, I mean, I do too. No, no, but, 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 it, it, I'll but, say but, you're right. later Metallica is tap. You know, and I love it. Parentheses. It's I mean, it's yeah, all Pentagram and all of that yeah. world. Absolutely. I mean, that that's really all it is. And then like. Lucero and Lucero is post tat shop. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like uh, yeah, dude. Which, I, I I'm th I think like five finger death punch. Oh, that's no, no, that's, no. A, that's a different. I mean, that's a, I don't know that's what tat shop you're that's at. That's twenty four hour walk in tat shop. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what Absolutely. comes to mind okay. when I think. So an, uh, an, uh, an, uh, a prestigious tat shop metal would be like a like a pentagram. Oh, like oh. A, a Lucero. Oh. A big. You buy a big hat after being real into hardcore. You yeah. know. Yeah game over mm -hmm. i think so i'm thinking of the two like hardcore run places in chicago it's a lot of like a lot of just punk mm -hmm. to be like we're we know it's good yeah. you know what's, I mean? your, what's your ideal mount rushmore tat shop playlist i mean danzig number one 100 come on it is it is kind of insane how much music makes a difference in the it's huge I have stopped playing more like aggressive stuff because I find people don't sit as well. Absolutely. That's it's like I want to listen mm -hmm. to dissection. Absolutely. My client probably doesn't while I'm, you know, I mean, you know. You know. You know. You know. What has she done on you? She did my neck. That was the first? Yeah, we're going to yeah. do something real big. Something. Gotcha, gotcha. She, I might promise her that appendage. Maybe the bottom ass. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, right. Okay, you said yeah, right. You yeah, got right. bottom ass now. All right. On Tam, do you have any hard vetoes that come on music wise? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We all do. Yeah. I'd love to hear a couple. I. Yeah. Like you know, like maybe not a personal, like like a right, one like that, for, one for, like somebody that's not watching. This. For, for example, mine would be an Aerosmith song. Mm. Skip, skip. Or just a song, or yeah. oh. any any veto, or a band in general is fine. But I'm saying like if a playlist comes on, and Spotify gets a little wily, mm. and for some reason Love in an Elevator comes on, I'm you're like absolutely out not. Of it. Yeah, Bow in, bow out of a time to show. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, Lucero is okay. absolutely not. Skip. Um, I'm sorry, ACDC. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's okay. I, I, we've, we've spoken. Yeah. It's, I have reasons why I do not love the ACDC. Sure. And, you know, they're valid. 100%. Should, should I? It's all subjective. Sure. I mean. This is your time. The vocals? Mm -hmm. Ah, cannot. Yes. And then they found the guy that sounded exactly like the last guy. Can you believe that? Yeah. So. I, how, do you, how is there two guys that sound like that? <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Um, you know, Bon Scott died. It's a little dark. Oh, what do we got? He fell asleep in the car. He was probably really drunk, but he was like, I shouldn't drive home. I'm going to stay parked. Fell asleep like that. Asphyxiated. That's how he died. Really? Wow. It's fucking crazy. That's a fucked up way. That is a fucked up way. He, he did the right knew? thing. Who knew? No, he didn't drive drunk. Oh, no. Did the right thing. No. Um, the guitar Please. tone, the dryness. Oh, I'm a cool. reverb kind of lady. Yeah, it's very You dry. know what I'm saying? No drum fills. You just, love a wet. Oh, hard. just let let me swim. Let me float. Absolutely. Zero. It's like, like just yeah. desert. Wow. Uh, let me ask you this. Something we ask every musician we talk to. Who they do? Oh, do you musician. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, is, am I am I the first? the first? Yeah, yeah you are. To on the show. Easy. Easily the first. It's a family affair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who do you do? Family as a affair. There it is. <laughs> Sly. Now, <laughs> who do you do? Meaning, like who? Who's my, my you number saw one? a tattoo? Like three or four, where you saw that you were yeah. like, damn, yo. So I do I think I can do that. Oh, and I do on. Porcel from Youth of Today. Those okay. are that's who I do on stage. I do Anzaldo. <laughs> <laughs> and Bailey and Zaldo, hair wise. Yeah, we do have good hair as a couple. I, I got three. I mean, come on. Wow. Thank you. Me? Thank yeah. you. The, the, I, I said the most gorgeous couple in the history of marriages. I wasn't wasn't blowing smoke. Not hyperbole. Yeah. Um, I love me some Tim Lee High. I mean, that's church. Bro. As as a human, <laughs> and yeah. you know, yeah. a tattooer. Artist. Friend of the show, technically, oh. Tim Tim Leon. He did That's the right. dragon That's in, the, right. uh, in the God's Eight LP. I mean, his, like, looseness, Dude. his his movement, it's just, like, it made me it's feel primitive. okay to be, like, 
loose. Yeah. And like, I, I don't know, it's, he's able to just do so much. It's, it's crazy. Love um, I love Matt Shama. No one really knows about Matt know, Shama. And maybe he's a tattooer's tattooer. Yeah, he's the ringworm. He's the, the tattoo. ringworm of tattooers. Wow. Oh, hell yeah, ringworm. It's all yeah. it's all one thing. All Mad Shama is fantastic. This whole sleeve is Mad Shama. Mm -hmm. This Iron Maiden is Mad Shama. <laughs> I mean, he's come on. I mean, Dan Higgs, of course. Sure. Come on. Gangster. Yeah. What are some trends happening in the tattoo world that you don't really like? There's so much I don't. Well, like. that's got to be most of it, right? Correct. Ooh, look at an athlete, and I can tell you yeah, they're correct. doing all the things. Correct. Do you have to, is it like, do you become an athlete because you have shooter tattoos, or do you get shooter tattoos? I think it's the latter. Classic chicken egg. Yeah. yeah. Classic. Yeah. When will we know? Um, I mean, trends in tattooing have always kind of been a thing, but it's also kind of weird because it's such a permanent art form mm -hmm. that like, what, how is there trends? Because they're ever changing. I mean, the new stuff right now is super foreign to me, like the little scribbly, little, everyone wants little things. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, the little, tiny just micro, like, yeah, right. really, they, they almost want it to look really bad. Yeah. Like that's the whole deal. And I just, maybe I'm just an old woman and I don't understand. She's 24 years old. Right, <laughs> double that. Do you find, I, I, I was just talking about this with Sean on the way over here, that the second I like decided I don't care about tattoos and like i don't need everyone to have a meeting mm -hmm. yeah. i just want it to look oh dope. dude looking dope is the second i like realized that it became so fun yeah, yeah. do you do you well, agree with that yeah. or yeah. i mean you can't take it too serious no we just got the sean michaels yeah people are like what do your tattoos mean i'm like i don't know it's just stuff i like it's like a fucking it's band stuff skeleton or... i like it yeah yeah exactly let me ask you something do you have a favorite ceremony song <laughs> Do you have a least favorite ceremony? No. <laughs> let's, 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 let's I he is generally really, interested in this. Yeah, I am. I really love doldrums a lot. It is so like creepy. Good wife. Real one. G dub. It's, Good it's, wife vibes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm G -dub. G -dub. G dub. Yeah. I came in later, right? Sure, of I course. came in when right when you were writing L Shape Man? Yeah, when we were writing L Shape Man. And you were a gothic rocking artist, you know? So when uh, he was like doing the demos and like playing stuff for me, I was like, this is so cool. This yeah. is like right up my alley. This is, cool. like, for gothic, this is like gothic rocking art. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, hell yeah. Because yeah. I, I never like really saw a ceremony. It was like in a different world because like the bay is it's small, but there's so many different pockets of like hardcore. Sure. And so yeah. I, I just didn't like run with that crowd. Is that where you're from too? No, I'm from San Diego, you're from San Diego. but I lived in the Bay for like 13 years. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, I came in at the more post-punk era you, of ceremony. And you two met here? The Bay. You met in the Bay. Okay, that Whole makes Foods. sense. Whole Foods. Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. Foods, Berkeley. Berkeley Whole Foods. Oh, is this the one? Out. Telegraph is, and Ashby. the one by Gilman? The one, no. Okay. That one is rather new. The Man, OG that one. That one is special to me. Telegraph. And Ashby, the second Whole Foods ever in California. Really? 1990. Oh. It opened. Wow. Dude, that Whole Shout Foods out. and then Phil's across the street were oh. heaven. Oh, yeah, that's for years. Yeah. Wow. Heather, this was so lovely. Was so I'm lovely. so glad we could invite you. <laughs> Guys, you got to come here. Holy Union. It's <laughs> beautiful. Sean, did you get the. Look at that. That's good shit. You don't want to get tattooed next to that? You're crazy. We're gonna go to Monty's. I'm fucking starving. I'm starving. How about you go first, and I'll and I'll just say me too. Hey, bud. Hi. How's it going? How are you? Pretty Thanks good. for having us. Yeah. Of course. I would. A, I would love a double, please. Double. Mm. As is. As is. I'll do the same. Double. And uh, how do you feel about the chicken sandwich? Pretty good. Before? I've had it before. It's pretty good. It comes with vegan eggs, pickles. And the twist of dipping sauce. I'll do it's, it. it's really good. Can I do yeah. the Nashville hot? Yeah, of course. Good call. That'll make a dry roast. It's pretty delicious. Does it still have a, a like a sauce on it of sorts? It's a it's the sauce is gonna be on the side. Oh yeah. Mm. And then but yeah. we that way still play your meat, sure, fresh sure. meat and stuff like that, you know. Sure. 
Uh, we have like a buffalo sauce, yeah. honey mustard, habanero as well. Uh, can I do the, I'll, I'll do a, a ranch. A ranch? Double chicken, national pub, ranch, anything else? Yeah, can I have a double? Double. And instead of the spread, can I have ketchup, please? Instead of the spread, ketchup? Please. And then I'd love to try the um, chicken tenders with buffalo sauce. Mm. Any beverages? Yeah. One sparkling strawberry. Yeah. Any other figures? I can't. Uh, can't drink a calorie. Really, uh, I'll, eat, I'll eat them all. He does it every day. But <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Never, never have. So three waters, start with lemonade. All right, you guys are all set. Thank Thanks, you buddy. so much. The best. Thank, Thank you so dude. much. <laughs> Front cam busted. I know, just fucking. Just what is worse? SCB, dude. Yeah. Hey, sure. here's what you look like. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been vegan? 19 years. 2004. <laughs> Are you what? like a, were you at one point? You know, you mentioned something earlier how like, as a straight edge person, you kind of go through phases where like, when I was younger in high school, I was a prick. Mm -hmm. I was like the worst straight edge kid. Uh -huh. I was very judgmental, uh -huh. very mean. Yeah. But all of us were, all, there was like a little group of like 15, 20 of us. And then you grow up and you kind of chill mm -hmm. out. Were you ever like, or are you still animal liberation front kind of guy? Oh. Are you just... I think that's... Are you vegan for the animal? That's sort of the difference, I think, between veganism and straight edge. Um, is... Like, yeah, I don't... If someone is drunk over there and I have nothing to do with them and they're not around me at all, I'm not dealing with them at all, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. by design. Right. With veganism, it's like, well, of course I would like there to be less animals that die for food consumption. Mm -hmm. But I don't, um, no, I mean, I don't, I don't pick, I don't, I don't fight with anybody. About I think you anything, and I, about anything. you yeah. and I being close, good friends, yeah, right. Right. maybe the proof is, that is the pudding of which the proof is made. Totally. And I, ultimately, I just want, I want there to be more options mm. for people like plant-based eating needs to be more normalized for all for all diets yeah. you know um how often do you eat like a fast food alternative uh, very rarely yeah right yeah which You're, is i think that's that's the the trap that people might fall into yeah yeah i think it's also a good gateway that, you know i mean burger king and jack in the box having vegan options um a brings you know um, makes vegans who who are just just became vegan a little a, it eases them into it a little a little better than I mean, it you know I was I felt like I was dropped in the middle of the ocean when I became vegan oh 100 uh, percent I mean dude I remember the first wave of of like vegan fast food that they, yeah. that you guys had to deal with and Boca. just be like I swear to God it's good Boca <laughs> yeah Boca burgers oh my yeah God. um where I don't want to eat. You know, I personally don't want to eat the Jack in the Box vegan burger or, yeah, you, or what. Like I'm just using that. I don't even know if yeah. they have one. But how do you feel about like the McVegan? Again, great, great for those people who are making the transition. Yeah. And if something is easier, then it will happen yeah. more. That's what Carl That's just, from Earth Crisis said. Yeah, asked him the same thing. Because some people are, get a little caught up in the consumption under capitalism exactly stuff. like that aspect totally and and i don't think i think that is true, true but i do think that um two opposing truths can both still be true right and, and it's never going to happen overnight that the the changes are never it's just not going to be totally and now there's an option for someone who who eat who does eat meat but they just don't most people I know who eat meat don't eat meat every meal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's becoming less and less normal. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if, if, if like protein intake weren't um, a disordered thought in my brain, <laughs> right? I would, yeah. I would, it would be way more rare. Of course. I mean, I'd of be course. eating fucking vodka sauce pasta. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so um, I, I do feel it important for like the greater um uh for for society to to be more plant food conscious mm -hmm. um where i mean i guess i could say that i i think it would be better for the greater good of society for people to drink less too mm -hmm. but that it's different that doesn't have 
Um, so many, there are so many variables that make, that I feel that make veganism important that just are absent within sobriety and, yeah, and, and straight edge. People right. don't need to drink to survive. People, especially of lower economic status, need to eat in order to survive. Well, and no, there's, there are, and on the flip, there are no animals, like nothing died to get that beer in your hand. Right. No, um, right. And so, so yeah, on like both ends of the spectrum, yeah, that point. that is true. And like we talk about McDonald's all the time. We love it. But scientifically, if you break it down, it is like it can be an inexpensive calorie dense thing to eat when you don't have time or resources to eat something else. So a place like that having. There you go an inexpensive calorie dense vegan option totally is is for, for the sake of progress of course a, it's, a, a, it's a it's a very good point yeah it's it could it's a gateway and you know uh an option and a nut and a, another option for someone who does eat touring meat. bands totally you know? oh dude totally you guys had you guys were starving you had taco bell man so it's funny exactly. i knew going into this <laughs> pod that we'd get into this discussion and i was like how do I want to approach this? Because of what I think, what makes hard lore what it is, is that you have been able to make this, this type of consumption fun. Mm -hmm. I love, a, there's a lot of podcasts by people who I love, who do a great job, but I think it's so evident to why you two have garnered so much success in such a short amount of time, because this is a, Listening to an episode of Hard Lore is a fun thing to do. Mm. Good. And, that's what we want. and that and that's it's clearly what you want. That's clearly the objective. And that it clearly works. And that's that's what makes you stand out. Oh, here we go. Oh wow. It's timing. Bring it in, brother. Thank is you. this for me? This looks like it's for me. I think oh. that's for you. <laughs> oh. So Anthony. Uh you're flying the ceremony's on tour. Or Cold Caves on tour mm -hmm. with Depeche Mode, yeah. which just happened. Crazy. <laughs> you fucking hear that? This man just toured with Depeche Mode, and we haven't talked about it one time. We're, we'll get We're it. We're going chronological. We'll get it. That's the most recent. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah. You're flying down the highway. Uh -huh. Let's say it's... Ah, I don't want to put a year to it, because I want you to have every option. Yeah, right. Yeah, Ceremonies yeah, right. on tour in the United States. Yep. You're about you. There's a magical exit sign mm -hmm. with all the places in the world in mm -hmm. the country on it. You can stop anywhere. Doesn't What's matter. the place on the sign where ceremony unanimously is like exit the freeway? We gotta eat. I need to consume. Oh, thank okay. you. This is good. So, if we're living in in fast food land, well. We are, yeah. In these in these modern times, in these trying times, <laughs> that simply it just doesn't happen anymore. Sure, we're uh, um, we're go to the grocery store before we leave the before we leave the city. Really, group? Do you have time for that? Uh, not always. You make time. <laughs> yeah, we make the time. Great. But in the in the in our in our earlier in our younger days. 10 times out of 10, that stuff is Taco Bell. Yep. It has to be, right? It has to be. It's we all you had for so we long. We were Taco Bell psychopaths. To the point now where I, it's hard for me to, to eat half of a burrito. Really? Because it's just, I associate it so much with... The boys? With being... In, with, with being malnourished and anxiety and and, and, and yeah right. like right um but we were so we could like we were the we were the kind of people the, the money shop look at that come we were the consumers where it's like the, okay so the taco bell on the other side of runner park the beans are a little a little more dehydrated oh, um and we 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 knew every we knew every pro and con of every Taco Bell in our vicinity. Right. And of course, I mean, vegans can eat there. <coughs> they can eat there. there. Every, everyone. No problem. And it's just a it's such a California. It is. It feels thing. like even though it's everywhere, it's, it's better, everywhere. But it's, it's like in California. it's like we were we were just grew up. On I here, don't on eat Taco it at Bell. Home. 
ever. No, I only ate it on tour, and I think that that is at least saved it for me a little bit. Yeah, because it's because I do like oh. it, brother. <laughs> brother, do I eat it at home? Do you really? Oh my god! What's your? I've what? never. Hmm. I recently there's something I've been doing on edit days. Mm -hmm. I'll DoorDash two large Baja Blasts. Cost me about fourteen dollars. It's a cycle. But I got need something to get me through that. Day. Oh, that one, huh? that yes. day of listening to Bo. I'm gonna give you this. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Put it in there. All right, let's try this burger. A little tendy. I'll tend. I'll tend. Mmm. Ranch blessing. How's the vegan ranch? Pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. He's very particular about his ranch. You're 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 a ranchman. He's a ranch. I'm a regular he's, cowboy. He's fucking Yellowstone. <laughs> What's I'm their Kevin fucking name? You're Kevin yeah, goddamn Kevin Costner. Costner. The ranch. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm the opposite of progress. <laughs> <laughs> like at this point, there can there's really no excuse that ever any fry yeah. should be not vegan. I agree. You know? Can you tell your story, or do you not want to? Oh no, I'll put sure to talk. Montage. First of all, thanks for having us. And for the meal. The first time I came here was with Anthony and a man uh, who needs no introduction. His name is Dave Havoc. <laughs> um, he's right there. You know, lifelong uh, fan. So it was just nice to. to it was, I think it was my second or third time hanging out with the two of you together. Invited me to have some burgers. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was after the Haunted Hayride. Oh, right. I went to the Haunted Hayride first, which was... Great time. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> went to Monty's after, and somebody who, like, when the owner or the co-owner or somebody, one of the, like, higher-up people... I think it may have just been a, a someone... Uh, just a classic team member who who knew that of his closeness right. with, with the owners. I, I think I have to do a full body. Yes, yes, sorry, full sorry. Full body representation of the mm -hmm. moment. So mm -hmm. let's say the table was Dave, Anthony, or Colin, Anthony. And the, the, the t shirt representative came over to the table and said, Did you want a shirt, Dave? <laughs> In a way that was like, not you, not you shirt for either of you, Dave. I gotta get you this shirt. And but and 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 bless Dave. Dave was like, like ah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you guys want, you know, like, like <laughs> yeah. very in, immediately inclusive. <laughs> yeah, but it was that, that was my one real Matthew experience. I also walked here to the other one, K Town, the K Town one from Glendale one time. That was crazy. You were, and the folks at home don't may, of course, why would they know this? But that year, <laughs> you purposely no, did not didn't. use a vehicle. That was oh, your walking year? I was walking you year. Were, you would walk 20 mile round trip for, for a stick of gum. Oh my God. And a lot of the time, I would be like, Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna maybe go get a donut in like two hours. Yeah, yeah. Which meant I'm yeah. leaving now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm leaving now. I'll see you in two hours. And your response was either, "Dude, I'm there," or, <laughs> yeah. or, "I just put a pot of lentils on. I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't make it." And that's how I know that the vegan fast food thing is not an every night thing uh -huh. for you. Because he's eating lentils. Because you're a pot of lentils. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> can't make it. Quinoa's on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That combo is one of, one of, if, because a lot of times if I'm cooking for both Heather and myself, right. I'm like, you know, I need to dress it up a, a, right. a little more. But my, if my go-to meal, if I'm just cooking for myself and I'm, I'm only ha have to worry about my, me, quinoa, red lentils, little brags, little turmeric, Really? Done. This com this moment w that I'm referring to was five years ago. <laughs> and I remembered your exact home order. <laughs> this is, you can, you, you can confirm that I have not, that I've not changed in the last five no, years. Real. Because <laughs> it was <laughs> verbatim. <laughs> when was Cold Cave? 
enter the picture for Anthony. I started touring with Cold Cave in February of 2019. Oh, do you know Chaz? Of course. Choir boy. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, That's same. Awesome. Yeah, he was touring with them too. Hi, Chaz. Yeah, so Chaz, he was on that tour. All right. They, right. they were on that tour. Um, I remember my great, lo- great human. Lovely guy. Sounds awesome. You, you love Lovely him. Lovely person. Yeah, they were doing merch for us on that tour. Mm. Um, the tour prior, Cold uh, Choir Boy was supporting. Right. They got along. And so we, um, the first time in, in the Cold Cave van, I was with, it was also Jazz's first time. So we, so we bonded. Mm. Um, I love that. So yeah, so about, I mean, you know, obviously a year and a half, two years of that was, was dormant. Um, but yes, it's 2019. It's um, my offer still stands, by the way. We'll you, I, I, you're, you're ro- ro- always rolling around <laughs> in this noggin, and you're you're in many compartments. I own a lot of black clothes. You know, what was the offer? I'll play drums for Cold Kid. Mm. I have so many black clothes. At one time, <laughs> at one time, didn't London May play? No, London May played yeah. guitar, right? Who played? He played drums for a, oh, he did. a tour. Like I in twenty like eleven. I, I think could, I could guarantee so, so. I got more black clothes than him probably. Than London May. Yeah. Now? Yeah. I would say yeah. You have a lot going for you, my friend. Let me oh. le- let me tell you that. So do you? Are you kidding me? Sexy man. Um, but yeah. So join. Hmm. <laughs> 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 You know what? I like this more than the burger. The chicken? Really good. When the chicken sandwich dropped, I did not, that was my order and only my order for like a year. I'm loving wow. it. I had to like stop. Careful. I'm liking this. I'm really, yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. <laughs> ba da 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 da. Um, McDonald's reference. <laughs> <laughs> Man. There's there's one the bit that we've done a couple times in this episode. Uh huh. I completely stole from Anthony. <laughs> I the I'm daddy thing and like I've used that. I'm I'm. And that's Anthony. I have no I, I I take no ownership. What's mine is what's mine is everybody. Whether you take it or not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I irrelevant. Credit, I credit the you're, you're like I, you know. I I, I appreciate that. Of course. Mm. And right now you are daddy. You're giving daddy. It's giving. It's giving daddy. And what's the... <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Have you gotten to write material with Cold Cave? Yeah, so the EP or LP that you... Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an ambiguous... Mm-hmm format yeah mm-hmm. um it's it's a seven song 12 inch mm. oh, no, and there are certain but certain publications have have put it on as oh i see as, as a full i mean i think it's literally an lp but is it a but whether it's in the full length album or EP i think status, the, the, the lp ep determination is in the intention mm-hmm. totally is it written as an lp i don't th- i think that, uh, that that has not been disclosed. I think that's where the, you know, lies? yes. Uh, the, so there's. A, I think it's intentional. So there's. A, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't want to project onto onto, you know, uh, Wes's right. like thought process. Right. I mean, it's it should be said that it's Cold Cave is very much Wes is Wes is Wes's there. project. Yeah. Um, he's dad. He's daddy. And Wes is dad. Yes. But on that release, uh, Fate and Seven Lessons, I am on four of the tunes. And each each song that I'm on, my role was a bit different. Mm. Uh, one song is, is kind of like a proper co-write. Um, and then like one, Wes was like, hey, I have this song, but I just, I just want a guitar solo right here. Ah. And then there's a song that, w- that was written. He's like, okay, just play guitar. Like the chord progressions were there and just play guitar throughout it. So it was really, it was a really fun experience because I never knew like kind of what mm. I was going to have to do. And then there were three songs that I had, I'm not, are purely electronic and, and 
West okay. did on his own. So um, you're Sean Martin now. In uh, in in all ways, I am Sean Martin. He's back in Connecticut. <laughs> That's right. The That's all, got all, in him. All, <laughs> roads <laughs> lead. all roads truly lead to Sean Martin. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we then then so we we did uh, that uh, that initial tour with Adult and Vows. Got home, did a a six day full U.S. tour with Ministry. Oh, oh, how was that? Um, it was awesome. I I mean I'm a, I am a early Ministries super fan. I mean I, I I love Ministry. I'm not I'm not trying to say yeah. I'm not a not. I'm not not a mid to late period ministry right. fan, yeah. but um, the Rape and Honey and Mine and Solemn, like those yeah. those three records. I mean, and of course with Sympathy, but like I feel like you know that's a different it's that's a different uh, that's a different band. band. Yeah, Twitch rocks too. Did they um, have any of the uh, Twitch is awesome. Yeah. Did they have the um, the fence up at all? Did they, they no? The so that at all? they started doing that again, kind of on, recently on a tour not long after that. Okay. This was a, a Wax Tracks. It was it was for the Wax Tracks documentary. Yeah. So it was only in like the six major major markets, as mm-hmm. they say. Um, and it was meant to be. It's a obviously a fly a fly tour, but um, we did not do that. Oh no. Yeah. So we drove. So uh, Brooklyn mm-hmm. to Toronto. Oh. Mm-hmm. Day off, Austin, Texas. Oh, my oh God. God. That was all done. And then Austin to home. In all of that, we lied down one time in a, in a hotel. Um, this is what the... This is, this is what art. This is this is, is what makes about. you. This is this is what makes you appreciate the things. This is what yeah, makes you hardcore right. certified. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Holy shit. That's what right. is what is Brooklyn to Toronto? Hundred. That's like the st- That's the smallest portion of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's that, that's that was like two a.m. I think we got in at like six p.m. Oh. Four p.m. Like, like we made sound check. Mm-hmm. You know, but it was but like, but, but, then, was but like, we drove straight yeah. from. We're here, might as well load in. Straight Bend from Toronto to Austin after the show, so didn't didn't sleep that night. Drove a two days to Austin, got there in the middle of the night. So we so we slept slept the the night before Austin, and then right after Austin drove to LA. Mm. Yeah. But we knew it was going to be, obviously we knew it was going to be brutal, yeah. but it was such a short amount of time. True. That I was like, okay, well, let's just have like a, a rough nine days. Rough week, yeah. Who cares? Yeah. You know, it'll be over over in a flash. And it was so fun. Did it end at home? It ended home. So that's that good. never happens. Yeah, so. <clears throat> yeah, not for you guys. Yeah. I drive, I've driven from Chicago and Connecticut more times than I've been. For some reason, totally. things end in Chicago all the time. It's the middle. It's the middle. It's, it's, the middle. it's, it's, it's like not that bad for anyone, but it's really it's bad really for bad everyone, for actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unless you live in Chicago. A few months later, maybe a year later, you're touring with the Fest Mode. So then we get home from that. And then Wes gets the songs together for, for Fate. Um, record those. That, that comes out during pandemic times yeah. um then we do um a few uh cherish the light years anniversary shows one in la right. one in new york um 10 year anniversary of and then you know a couple one-offs but then yeah we and then a year uh, probably a year later um it's probably really hard for you folks on your couch with your youtube app and apple tv to follow this timeline i apologize um we go on towards the fish tell me about that how long was that tour? It was six shows, two weeks. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, they're on a bus. They're they're um, on. Are they flying? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. If, yeah, they're on two planes and two buses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're on some transport yeah. transporter. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're Just like night on two days. Yeah, off, yeah. Jetsons. Yeah. Jetsons vibe. Um, it was it was the best thing ever. Like <clears throat> ever, right? It was just the best. I, I can't I, imagine. How that felt. Yeah, I mean, they're probably my favorite band, uh, Depeche Mode. So just that alone. 
Um, they play Blasphemous Rumors. They did not play Blasphemous Rumors, but they did play. Um, they played a lot. You want to hear? They, they played Strip. They know. They yeah. They know. They're, but you know they've all, they've never been a nostalgia right. band. Like uh, every 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 record's good. They only tour when they have a record out, and every you're getting four to five songs off every record, mm-hmm. and if you're not into that record. Dave Gahan is gonna make you love that record by the end of that show because he is—he has the weight of the world on his shoulder. How do you craft a ceremony set list with seven LPs out of of varying genres? Yeah, it's um, yeah, Good it's point. you have to commit to um, a certain feel for a few blocks for a few numbers, yeah. and then you have to kind of ease out of it into into something else or you you know sometimes we'll make the conscious decision to to hard stop it from a from like a really down tempo subdued song into something really abrasive Mm. um but it's actually it's pretty easy because there's not a lot we don't really play anything i still nothing moves you and then the 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 ruined violence violence stuff is is there's not a lot of that, and usually that's at the end. So it's, it's not. It'd be a lot trickier if we were like felt like we had to play something, a few things off every album. But you just like, like with anything, yeah. you know, like, like with uh, with with making love. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's you don't a, just it's go a thirty second set <laughs> and you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and Colin doesn't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Colin's a prude. He doesn't talk about the set. What did I say the one time that you love? I'm not horny. Wow. That's 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 my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Colin Young, Colin Young quote all the time. We not, not horny. horny. Yeah, I feel you know we don't we won't go from an L. Shea Man song into a Violence Violence song into you know a Runner Park song into a synth song. So they're in blocks. Yeah, you kind of yeah, and not even so much in eras, oh. as so much in just sort of wow. like intention. Mm-hmm. Intention is everything. Yeah. Why yeah. is so much more important than what? Let me ask. Couldn't you something. have said it better myself. Let me ask you something. I probably could have. <laughs> Let me ask you Hit me before you, you know, make me cry again. Let me ask you something. You ever spin kick? Has Anthony? I'm. I don't know if I've. I have not been kicked. Spun cuffed is the. Yeah, that's new. I have. I have done adjacent. <coughs> adjacent movements. Adjacent maneuvers. Tell me about a maneuver that's adjacent to a spin. Well, like a sweet chin music, or like a. Yeah, maybe a. Uh, I've never spin kicked. No. no. What, what, could you? I think you could. What when pants? I don't not know. in those pants. I don't know if my pa- if if my yeah. if my bottom yeah. attire would allow for spin kicking. I would have. You, you would have. There would not be a, a thread, a crumb of thread left if I spin kicked in those. What's the name of that? Uh, the Cure album. Disintegration. <laughs> It's about me spin, spin kicking a in my pants. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we got one. That sorry. That what the dis- disintegration is that's about. What's about. <sighs> that's what the best record ever is yeah. about. Great me spin kicking. <clears throat> yeah. The actual title track, oh. disintegration. It's the best song. It is the best song they played it. A period best song. Mm-hmm. That's not. That's not a wrong thing to say. Yeah, no, that I disintegration agree. is the best song. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The best song on the best record. Agree. What do you do, Anthony? Uh, we know the fucking answer to this, but come on. So live? Yeah. I feel like live and recorded are different. Yeah, for, especially for true. especially for kind of what live is like what we yeah, do. No, exactly. You know? Um like I feel like if you watch this live with the volume down, or or maybe me, we're talking about me, so I'm Yeah. This is about Anthony. You may maybe you wouldn't think that we're playing 
the genre of music or the genres that that, sure. that we play. I don't know, but lot, what, 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 why it's why it's so cool. Yeah, right. I think you know my like the way I approach guitar and hold, hold a guitar is very Prince. Um, that 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 would that he informed me on the guitar as a as a instrument. So live, um, I feel that's kind of. I feel so because he's the greatest. Yeah. Well, so I'd be like, I'm doing Prince. It's like, well, I mean, you know what I mean? <clears throat> we're all trying. We're, we're all yeah. trying. Att- yes. Doing an attempt. And that's of the course. attempt is what makes of course. a unique. I've lifted a, a lot of moves from Prince. I've go. lifted more moves from, from Prince than any, than Whoa. anybody else. That's a good one. What's your favorite on stage move? Well, yeah, absolutely. Spin kick. <laughs> I only spin kick on stage. <laughs> oh, you meant in the pit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, uh, on stage, five five spin kicks a, a, a track oh, for okay. me. That's what I thought. That's what uh, I do you play only boss pedals because Prince did? Or do you I out? play mostly boss pedals, but I was just give, gifted a bunch of deadbeat pedals, which I really like. Cool. Um, so I've been playing with those live lately. On record, I'm doing Rick Agnew from Christian Death and Adolescence and Greg Ginn mm. and... I saw Greg Ginn once at Handlebar in Chicago, the uh-huh. vegan place. It was during a ride fest and he was playing with Off at the time. And I like, got up, me and my friend were leaving and I looked and I was like, oh, I, I Wait, know Wait, Greg that. Ginn was playing in Off? Yeah. Are we sure? Yeah, 100%. Or, or Off was playing and he was doing a Greg Ginn solo. Okay. What, something okay. like that. Okay, So and not 100%. So not 100%. Yeah. So I like looked and I was like, oh, I know that guy. And he, he was like, he, he was like, he, he did that to me. Just there's like, a person please. with tattoos. I know exactly what's about to happen. Please leave me alone. I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just never mind. Yeah. Is there? Black Flag was playing, uh, Black Flag was playing next door to, to ceremony recently. And we were like loading out at the same time. And he was like smoking a cigarette while we were, and I just didn't have, did he hit you with like, smoking a cigarette while we were loading? I, I the didn't. old man. <laughs> yeah. You guys play? <laughs> um, I, you know, I do. Play I do Johnny Ramone. Ooh. I'm a big down. You got a you, you got a downstroke, downstroke in the in the world that sick is we, all downstroke. Yeah, if if it's one upstroke, you played it wrong. That's, that's right. a yeah, downstroke that, and son of a bitch. That's right. Right there. Right there. That's right. Wow. He'll break that fucking thing in half before right. he upstroke. He'll break that guitar he made with his bare That's hands. Right. Oh, yeah. He'll get another $645 by <laughs> yeah. the time one breaks. You know? It's insured. <laughs> Downstroking. <laughs> Johnny. More or less. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, though, like, Greg and Rick had, like, a really interesting and creative approach to playing punk that was like dark, but still melodic, but violent, you know, that was like, that really influenced like the kind of through Runner Park and then Johnny Marr and Robert Smith. Yeah. Like I've, I have wholesaled, almost whole, I've almost wholesaled both of them quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about Anthony. Oh. Anthony is my solo project. Um, I'm recording a I'm recording a record right now. It's I'm finally I feel like I'm at the place where my vision, my vision and my abilities are are on the same level. What a scale like. that can be! So I'm George Lucas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited about what everything I've done now up until now is not a good is not a very good representation of of what i envision the project to ultimately be um but it's i'm really i'm really excited i'm really hopeful that it comes out um i love the one that i've heard i'll tell you that thank you very much thank you very much the i did a i over the pandemic i released uh, a Prince covers album. I did the album Dirty Mind front to back. Really? Uh, where I recorded the vocals with your lovely brother, Taylor. Um, and I think that is more um, representative of what where the project is is, is going. Um, and it's funny, every time I've tried to 
like explain what it's like, you know, it's like, you know, post-punk, but kind of like art rock, you know, and like Advent pop, but there's like some R&B and I'm like, it just sounds like a guy that really likes David Bowie and Prince. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. the guitar player of Sarah Lee covering Prince. Wow. That's what it is. But but also all of those other things. You should write the little sticker. Yeah. yeah. Can we'll you do the, the bio? Yeah. yeah. Can you do the bio? Picture this. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Gonzalo. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Playing music. Yeah. <laughs> Some people. <laughs> <laughs> it is your birthday. <laughs> we hit each other that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so I'm, yeah, I just played my first show. Um, Post pandemic at Genghis Cohen a few weeks ago. Um, what a place, huh? What a, were you just there last night? What a place for to to attend a, to attend a live some live music. Dude, I mean the food. The restaurants seem nice. The Un- Queens, the Queens tofu. The Queens tofu. Oh my goodness! Did that like the bathrooms are nice. The place is unbelievable. Yeah, it's a good venue. it looks incredible. Yeah. So there's 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 a game that you wanted to show us, and I think that Bo should be the recipient of the game. So the game, I on the drive to Juice, we were talking about uh, a mutual friend of ours who will remain nameless, I suppose, but they lost all their contacts in their phone. So I called them the other day and it wasn't until like a minute in where they were like, hey, I don't know who this is because I've lost all my contacts. Yeah. So I just saw the number and I was so impressed by it that they answered an unknown number, um, obviously for it being who who is have you heard of anyone doing that in the year of our lord 2023 so this reminded me of a game that we used to play in the ceremony van okay where someone would take out their phone and you'd go to your contacts and you'd scroll and then you would blindly select a contact you would then show the contact to the rest of the van and wait for their green light to ensure oh. to ensure that the the contact you selected was Ruin, not ruined your life but. was not like a family member that you've had a falling okay. out with okay. or you know so it would also have to be someone that they sort of knew we both know so like if you're about to call someone that we didn't know it'd be you know it does it be still purpose yeah so we'd give the green light then you would click call and you would blindly call a random contact in your phone and the game is you trying to figure out who you're on the phone with so so the 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 tricky part about this game now is that it's uh it's almost a faux pas to call someone so a a a non-pickup is rather commonplace i don't like it sean how stressful is it a little bit but then i saw it was nick and it's of course yeah What's up, Claire? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing so, so good. What are you up to? I'm getting ready to head over to 1720. What are you up to? Kat, I just want to tell you something. (laughs) I just won a game where I had to call someone randomly who I didn't see who it was, and I had to figure out who they were. Kat, you're live on Hardlore right now. You're live on Hardlore. Hi, Kat. Anthony says hi. Colin says hi. He figured it out in record time. Record time. So thank you for so being. So that's a best case scenario. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being a champion, cat. You are so welcome. And I'm gonna be so honest. I only answer because I always answer the phone for people who never call me. So that makes sense. Wow. So thank you. Continue to do so. You're so welcome. I think I deserve a prize. You do. So. Okay. We'll, we'll figure we'll, something out. I'll send you money. Thank you, cat. <laughs> Have a good night, Barbie. Okay. Bye, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. <laughs> That is too. That fun. was perfect. Okay, yeah, I like, that was I like best the case. That's best case scenario. She has a very distinct. As soon as she story. said seventeen twenty, so, I was like, oh. there. I have in playing the game. There are people who that I've got. I land on multiple times. No way. So there are people in this world that walk through their life thinking, there's a, there's a time when Anthony, Anthony calling, was just calling me all the time for some reason. Uh, Do you want to play the game? Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Well, think about what I told you earlier in the call. About I mean, context. yeah, if, if you land on someone and I don't know who they are, or, you know, you you also, part of the game is... I had to trust you. It's a trust fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. All right, all right, ready? Yeah. You gonna scroll? No, you can, yeah. Okay, stop. Or go the other way. 
and hit it. Oh. Let me see. I don't know who that is. Okay. No. Okay, no. we're gonna do it okay. again. This is fun. Again, I don't, got a if, lot if it's of the one that I think and hope it is, it would be awesome, but I don't think it is. If we, if we don't know, I yeah. feel like, okay, go down. Scroll down. Yeah, keep. Further. Faster, son. And there you go. Got a lot of content. There's, there's just no way. You are, however, you are by someone. Do, do, do we cheat the game and just, and just click? Well, so he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. do that. It's, it's, it's adjacent. You were right by it's, it. It's near, it's near where you landed on, and we're gonna try it. Okay. So I've picked one now. Now this is cheating, but for the sake of good television. Hey, what's up? What's up? How's it going? It's good. How are you? I'm just vibing, dude. I'm I'm out to dinner with Bo and Anthony from Ceremony. Sick. All good people. What are you doing? I'm eating up some Indian food. From where? Uh, a little spot called Desi Spice. Where is that? What city is that in? It's in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. So is this a foundation reunion show really happening, Champ? <laughs> is it happening? It is not. Okay. Champ, I'm just going to tell you what I just did. We are, you are live on Hardball right now. Oh, goodness gracious. We were playing a little game where we had to scroll through our contacts and call someone live. They picked you for me. Oh, I'm and, so honored. And you were the example I used... <laughs> this is random. This is random. Yes, yes. I said, Bo didn't understand the terms of the game. And I said, if you say, let's say you landed on Champ Hammett, uh -huh. you would try to figure out if you were talking to Champ Hammett. And by golly, did I just figure it out. Hi, Champ. Hi, Champ. Hey, bud. Hi, guys. I hope you have the best day. Enjoy your Indian food. Foundation, Mount Rushmore Straight Edge. What's up? Uh, I appreciate the call. And, uh, I hope you guys have a great time this weekend. Thanks, man. We love you so much. Love you guys, too. Have a Bye. great day. Bye. We're good at this game. That was, that good. was good. That right? was good, yeah. yeah. Where is that? Yeah. What city is that? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Like Perfect. And then I heard the voice, and yeah. he's like, mm. only a real estate agent is picking up my call. Oh, clever. Yeah. I like the game. I think it's time for something sweet. I think it's... Yeah. Well, fuck. I, we got to recharge a little bit. We yeah. can recharge in the car. I need to recharge my, my batteries with something sweet. Oh, yeah. Let's nice. go to Magpies. Let's go to Magpies. I love that idea. They have vegan stuff in Magpies? They do. Mostly. Big time. Holy shit. Yeah. Mostly. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go over there. We're going to get some ice cream. Good acting. What's your... Uh, so it changed the flavor. What's your V flavor today? So okay. Their corn almond is incredible. Yeah. I guarantee you the brown brown and dyer is good. And you can swirl those two. Wrap us up. Yeah, so we're we're gonna wrap up here. We're at Magpies. It's dessert right. time. You, I, I wanted to stand here. Please. I apologize. You know, Daddy always needs something sweet after something savory. And we're daddy. We are daddy. And we are daddy. So as we eat um, this ice cream, I have a couple questions for you. Uh-huh. When when I asked you your favorite breakdown of all time. You responded with Bee Gees' Nights on Broadway, which, yes. don't get me wrong, uh -huh. one of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. It is up there with Return of the Mac in songs I've listened to for the most consecutive hours of the world. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of what, what the world perceives as an actual breakdown in hardcore punk metal yes. yeah. rock, do you have any answers for me? So, I think my answer within the yeah. punk and hardcore realm still may be even a bit controversial for the for the context of this pod. I would expect nothing less. But you tell me. Uh, Get Out by Madball. It's a, it's very simple. It's not... Madball. Yeah. Iconic. It's so simple. It's so iconic. The call out at the begin at, at the at the top of the yeah. breakdown. It just band name, you know, I'm all about that. Love that. Also, I can't not move before the song starts. Him doing uh, it's it goes get out, 
get out. Yeah. Is uh, the whole audience is already popping. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, you created a moment like that that you've created a live nuance mm -hmm. that is so that is iconic as the song itself. And, and the breakdown leads. is your fucking band name as the mosh call? Pretty hard. Game over. That's and it's, a great you know, answer. It's one of those it's one of those riffs that you think to yourself how has no one plucked that mm. from the it was just sitting there amongst the atmospheric river <laughs> and they're the ones who knew to pluck it they really were man and that happened all the time with them truly them and af it was like damn those notes were just there the whole time mm -hmm. waiting to be used like that mm -hmm. what did we what did I, I said new york city i think was my yeah mine too yeah that's crazy that that for what um maybe what i feel like most people would consider yeah like mm -hmm. that's that's what a breakdown is mm -hmm. if something if we're talking something that's a half time that incorporates half time and and palm mutes yeah i would i would probably agree with you okay well thank you i've long since maintained that can't stop won't stop is one of the like a top five hardcore song of all time Period. Period. Top to I bottom. think we quoted it on the way to Juice today. We did. Yeah. I don't remember the context, but it was. But it happened. Can't stop, won't stop. You know that part? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, dude. You made me laugh. I said Bram all over the place. Um, also, I guess there's a last question. We, you know, we, we say that perfect albums, we, we could talk, call it the master killer tier. We yeah. Should, we should probably stop doing that. You know, perfect album is perfect album. Sure. Master killer is master killer. <laughs> what do you feel we've missed? So, mm. very good question, Paul. So I have a, a two-part answer to this question. And the first part, I'm certain will be controversial. And for that, I apologize. <laughs> but, you know, if you want, if you don't want controversy, don't don't, don't call have, the king. Don't, don't, don't have call old Tony on. Don't call double A. There is soprano. there is a <laughs> master killer tier album that you frequently reference when explaining the concept that I do that I strongly feel is not master it, tier. Oh, are you gonna say it's master killer? No, no, no. I'm not. I wouldn't. <laughs> Come on! All right. I, I, yeah, I'm not trying to have all the all the threads unravel here. <laughs> I I'm, I'm listening for it to be master killer tier. Mm -hmm. I think we could agree on this. No skips. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And I believe the album Thriller by Michael Jackson has a skip. Agreed. The dark gun girl is mine. Yes. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That's why I say bad. I don't Which has no skips. Wait, I, th I think, think bad's high points are mind. are plentiful. I, I guess I guess I wouldn't make them high points. That would be. Are you doing? What's wrong with you? I'm dropping you. I non ironically think that song rocks. The girl is mine. Yeah, I, I really do. I think Paul McCartney's voice sounds great. You think that they sh had any business chasing the same girl at any t point in time? I mean, that's that's, that's a ridiculous way to look at it. Is it? I think. I mean, look. If there is any such thing as objectivity in art, <laughs> folks would not have a podcast. No. <laughs> of course. So I feel you, but I think it is like it is quite silly in a way that you know I don't feel like is uh, that makes it not classic. I guess Paul McCartney, ten out of ten singer. The the performances obviously yeah, yeah. are great, but. I don't like that song. I, I was I went to Michael Jackson's Stable Center Memorial. You know? Right, right. Lifelong fan. Mm -hmm. Let the man rest. Mm -hmm. Bad smokes it in hundreds of ways. So so I just wanted to put that out there. Paul, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> yeah. Colin, I'm a yeah, lover. Yeah, like not a <laughs> the talk like the monologue, it's like Yeah. It's so silly. Paul being like, no Michael, I'm gonna fuck her. <laughs> We're going to listen to that immediately, Sean. As soon as we get in the car. Michael, I need to fuck this girl. No, Paul. I need to fuck this girl. So, I don't believe. <laughs> what you've missed. Um, 
I have again have not listened to every uh, hard no, war okay. pod, though I am a fan. So I, you maybe someone has 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 dropped these in the past. Um, I'm sure it's no shock to either of you. I think Prince has three master killer records. We never mentioned no, one true. being Dirty Mind, one being Purple Rain, and one being Sign of the Times. I I think from uh, 79 to 89, there's every album is essential. But I, I could see the logic in some people thinking that maybe Parade is not is not uh, only classic songs, okay. so on and so forth. It is subjective. Of course, of course. Um, mm. You used to yell at me and say that. Well, the point of Master Killer is that it's not a, a subjective. No, I don't. It's it's not that. It's just that there's a difference between like favorite and best. You know. And there's a difference between amazing album, great album, and. Timeless and album perfect, and, and classic this thing perfect. I really I, I like. Well then, by that rationale, Thriller smokes bad because it sold more. It's his best record. That's what I'm saying. Oh. I <laughs> Let's just go track by track and tell me. Come on. Yeah. It's not even close. But by that logic, Swamp Thing also belongs on our list somehow. <laughs> Swamp thing. Because somebody thinks that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I guess it's not subjective, it's objective. But, you guys, I love you. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think uh, The Cure by Disintegration. Other way around. Yeah. Strike that, reverse it. Yeah. You got some chocolate no, on. No, that was right. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Cure's Disintegration. There it is. This is good. Um, the Smiths, The Queen is Dead. Oh, oh all day. Uh, Depeche Mode, Violator. All day. Do you prefer The Queen is Dead? Is that that's, I think that's my favorite. Uh, Stevie Wonder, Talking Book, Stevie Wonder, Intervision, oh, Stevie dude. Wonder, Thoughts. Uh, 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 Songs in the Key of Life. Oh. Um, Are you Smiths over Morrissey? Susie, Soul? The Scream. Um, I, no, I'm, I, I prefer the Smiths, but oh. I do feel that because there are people who are only like they love the Smiths, but they don't care for it's Morrissey's just solo. It's just crazy. And I feel like most people who love and celebrate his solo work and the Smiths prefer Morrissey's solo. Yeah, I do. So, so I feel I am on. Uh, I um, am one of the few who love both, but still celebrate. But still prefer the Smiths. Okay, that's fair. I mean, that's me. Those are different moods. That's Taco Bell and Del Taco. You're absolutely, absolutely wow. You know, absolutely. It's like Smiths. You're getting fucking riffs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the best riffs ever written by a guy who had never heard the word riff. Like, and and can never be replicated. Can never mm -hmm. be replicated. Morrissey, you're getting the most finely crafted, like pop rock and roll songs mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think with the Smiths. I like how his a lyrical approach was a bit more story oriented, where he gets a he he's 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 more heavy handed with the solo stuff, which most all of it is I I um, I, I do love, but there's something about uh, kind of involving the listener in 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 the in the tune he was less worried about that grass like, than that grass right rhyme and and fitting right. things right. and 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 the smiths and then Dude, he, is like finely crafted po poetry right he like hated rhyming you know what i mean it was like mm -hmm. anti rhyme he hated layers and harmonies yeah crazy. you know crazy God, imagine being that good can't do it yeah i love a layer i love an anthem really and that's why we're here freedom of choice devo Wow, how huge was that for you interacting with? Oh my God, the mother's ball. It was in. Come on in. It was unreal. It was so. It was so him, mm -hmm. too, which made it so much better. Right. Tell me about that experience. Cold Cave played um, a friend of their, a friend of ours. Theirs. It's hard to. I you know I never know what to really say. Yeah, yeah. Um, birthday party that Mark Mother's Bow from Devo uh, was in attendance and uh, Wes and Amy introduced me to Mark and they uh, 
uh, asked me to show him my Devo tattoo, which is here. And then he, well, I'll, I'll send it to you. Maybe, you know, maybe you could. Oh, here it is. You know, with your, with your tech savviness, mm -hmm. could show these Isn't folks. Isn't this great? Show these. <laughs> <laughs> and then he proceeded to do the, the most Mark Mothers Bow thing ever. I know it was. You, you see right now, the expression on my face is uh, joy. It's pure joy and honest. Gorgeous. Um, Anthony, man, I could do this all day. Uh, we'll do a we'll we'll do we'll do uh, we got we'll some, do something. We got some album <laughs> anniversaries coming we'll up. We'll do something uh, once. I love it. Yeah, we got we got um, we got the Anthony solo album coming out soon. Anthony, that's what I want you to walk away from this thinking. Like, wow, what a cool guy. Because you know he's been in the shadows for so long, and I've been trying to bring him out of the shadows. But look at this black clothes, which I own a lot of. But, but man, and now I'm glad that you all know the real Anthony just as I do. Um, Anthony, thank you so much. For thank you so much for having me. Ceremony, cold cave, Anthony, whatever you call it. <laughs> oh. Black clothes, cold cave. Monty's good burger, Monty Mac man. magpies. <laughs> They're fucking Baileyans all the holy year. Tattoo. This has been Hardware Story from Tor. We will see you next week. Bye. It's a day, you know?